Buick dealer. For comfort, innovation, and a real commitment to quality, it's today's Buick. By Gulf, the station with one low price, cash or credit. And by Coors. Stock up on the cold, refreshing taste of Coors where you buy beer. From Stan Sanford Stadium in Athens, Georgia, the Red Coat Band with the national anthem just prior to this ball game between the Baylor University Bears and the University of Georgia Bulldogs. The Bulldogs are not used to losing here at Sanford Stadium either. They have, however, lost their last two games in a row. They're hoping not to have that happen today, but they're playing a very tough team in the Baylor Bears. They are loaded. When I say loaded, hello everybody, this is Bob Neal and Tim Foley. When I say loaded, Tim, they are loaded with a double-barreled shotgun. Two quarterbacks for Baylor, Tom Mickey and Cody Carlson. And Bob, we saw them when Grant Pass was alternating them on every play two years ago. Uh, but it really doesn't make any difference which one of them is quarterback. They'll alternate every other series. They're as close to clones as any two QBs can be. Both throw the ball well, both have good feet, and they've both been co-captains the last two years, good leadership ability. And there is a star in the defensive backfield of Baylor. Watch for number 27, Thomas Everett. He returned a punt 75 yards for a touchdown last week. He had an interception and 12 tackles against Wyoming. We saw him two years ago in his first start against Texas A&M. Blocked a field goal at the end of that game to preserve a victory, and he's been coming up with a big play ever since. He leads a secondary that last year intercepted nine passes in their last two games. And on the other side of that coin, Georgia has a lot of questions and problems with the secondary. Their leader back there, Tony Flack, is injured and won't play today. Their secondary is as green as the hedges that border that field down there. Willis, Morris, and Smith, the three starters in the secondary today, don't have three games of experience between them. And at quarterback, Georgia may have a two-quarterback system today, too, of sorts. Wayne Johnson, he's 6'3", and a redshirt freshman will start. He, we will also see James Jackson, 5'10", play sometime during the game. Wayne Johnson has the big arm, the big gun. James Jackson, a good leadership ability, quick feet. But Georgia is searching for an answer at quarterback, whereas Baylor has found a system. Coach Vince Dooley at Georgia says this is a no-name team. There are no Tarkinsons, no Walkers, no Baloo's, no Hogs on this team. Maybe somebody will step forward today. We're looking for a very good close ball game between the Southwestern Conference Bears and the Southeastern Conference Georgia Bulldogs from Sanford Stadium. In just a moment, we'll continue with Football Saturday from our studios with Craig Sager and Alec Hawkins. And Alec Hawkins. Welcome to our third week of Super Football Saturday. We open by showcasing Florida State, a team that has now moved up to number five in the rankings. Bobby Bowden, just about as good an offensive coach as you want. Jamie Dukes heads up an offensive line that's talented and deep. Running backs, the Smith boys will handle that. Denny McManus has proven himself a quarterback. That was the big question that Bobby Bowden had with the quarterback situation, Eric Thomas or Danny McManus, but I think he found one. Yeah, he found a Billy Kilmer with a spiral. <laughs> that after defeating Tulane, they beat Nebraska on the road. That's why they really moved up to number five. Anytime you beat Tom Osborne, coach team, you've done something. Florida State's for real. And last week, we saw Auburn's Bo Jackson, who set an NCAA record with 290 yards in the Hedges. We'll be back. Let's go down to Bob and Tim. Just moments away from these two teams entering the field here. The second game of the year for Georgia. They lost 20-16 to to Alabama, and now here come the Baylor Bears, who were big winners over Wyoming strong last year. And Coach Vince Dooley of Georgia says Baylor reminds him of Alabama in the SEC in that they have momentum. Returned a lot of veterans, were 5-6 and six last year, but looked to be a very strong contender in the S Southwest by Grant Tapp, one of the great coaches in the Southwest Conference. And here come the Georgia Bulldogs. They lost. The folks around here are getting a little bit surly as they are not used to the Bulldogs losing in Athens. They lost to Georgia Tech in the season closer at Sanford Stadium last year. And then, of course, the Alabama loss. So today is a big game for these Georgia Bays. Vince Dooley says he feels his team is ready to play but has a lot of questions to answer on just how five is going to be. And we're going to find out as they meet a tough team from the Southwest Conference, the Baylor Bears, in just a moment. It is a windy and uncharacteristically cool day here in Athens. It is 65 degrees, sometimes as high as 20 miles an hour. This is Turner Network Television. for 
understating his team's strength and sometimes overstating the opposition. We asked him about today's matchup with Baylor. Well, the two things I think Baylor definitely has over us is number one, experience, because they've got so many people coming back from last year's team, nine starters on offense and uh, seven on defense. And uh, secondly, uh, they have uh, more speed, a lot more speed than we do. They are, uh, well, I think, one of the fastest football teams that uh, uh, we've been able to play. As far as what we have over them, I'm, I'm not real sure. Uh, I do know that I'm glad we're playing here in Athens, Georgia, and not playing in Waco, Texas. Georgia head coach Vance Dooley. Baylor won the toss, elected to exercise their option as to whether to kick or receive in the second half. So Georgia elected to receive and will be going from left to right today and moving a little bit into the wind. The wind 10 to 20 miles an hour from the northeast and Georgia standing in the southwestern end of their end zone and ready for the kickoff now, the Baylor Bears. And the man who kicks off for Baylor is number 32, Jim Mueller. They have a field goal kicker named Terry Seiler who wears 19. Gary Moss is the deep man for Georgia. It comes down short, however, and that's Keith Henderson. To the 49-yard line. Keith Henderson, the freshman from Cartersville, Georgia. And there is the starting quarterback, Wayne Johnson. In the backfield will be David McCluskey at fullback and Lars Bate, the sophomore at tailback. Hockaday and Archie will start at the wide receiver positions for the Georgia Bulldogs, looking to get something started offensively. Frankly, it's not as good a Georgia offensive line as they've had in the past. The leader is center Peter Anderson. I might mention Wycliffe Lovelace is not starting at tight end. Troy Sadowski is Georgia on first down. McCluskey gets inside Baylor territory after that good field position on the return to the 46-yard line. The Baylor Bears defensively have some question marks up front. The best player on the defensive line is 77, Steve Grumbine. Also look for big plays from 81, Derek Turner. The linebackers are very good. Ray Berry, number 57, is an excellent one. According to Grant Tapp, he's the second best linebacker he ever coached. And look for 27, Thomas Everett, in that experienced, talented secondary for Baylor. It is second down, seven Georgia from the 46. Who gets inside the 45 for the 43, tripped up by 77 Steve Crumbine. Georgia grinded out football. Last year, Baylor was number one in the Southwest Conference versus the Rush, but they lost three starters in their defensive line. Mergen Hagen, Bomb Camp, and Coriat are gone now, and Georgia's going to test that front. It is third down three from the 43 of Baylor. Brought for the loss at the 46-yard line. Number 81, Derek Turner from right end. Nice play by Turner here. Turner was a walk-on. Came to Baylor as a walk-on. Last year was, according to some polls, an all-Southwest Conference performer, a leader in their defensive end. So Georgia has to punt. They got good field position, could not convert a first down. And here is redshirt freshman Chris Carpenter, one of the best athletes. And there's the deep man, 27 Everett. He had a 75-yard return for a touchdown against Wyoming. Very dangerous. But Carpenter aims it high. It's going to be a fair catch at the 12, 13-yard line by Thomas Everett. The best defense against a return is a very good hang time by the punter, and Chris Carpenter is one of the best. Only a 34-yard but very effective punt. And now the Baylor Bears, led by Tom Mickey, will also see Cody Carlson at quarterback. Derek McAdoo, Robert Williams starting in the backfield. Pruitt and Clark are the starting wide receivers. There's the offensive line. Also not a real strong point for Baylor. John Attix at center and Mark Cochran are the leaders up there. Kobe Thorne is the tight end for Baylor. Bears have great team speed and are explosive. Five plays longer than 20 yards against Wyoming last week. And Bob, look for them to put the ball in the air on first down. There it is. It's complete to Clark to the 21-yard line. Short of a first down, tackled by number 16, right cornerback Michael Willis. Let's talk about the Bulldogs' defense up front. Good play in the Alabama game from defensive tackle Henry Williams. He's joined by Waters, Sims, Harris, and Loy. They're the defensive ends. Vince Dooley says these guys are real, true grit, junkyard dog linebackers. <laughs> Mitchell and Brantley, they're tough. And there's the question mark. Can the secondary, led by John Little, handle Baylor's explosive offense? On second down two from the 21. Mickey. 
has a man wide open an exceptional courageous catch at the 49 yard line by robert williams coming out of the backfield a 30 yard completion bob they're working against a two deep zone here one of the weaknesses in the two deep zone is that area down the middle about 20 yards deep mickey puts the ball right on the money a great concentration by robert williams he takes a a real shot there from Miles Smith. Smith does everything he can to shot, shake the ball loose, but super catch by Robert Williams. From the Georgia 49, first down 10, Baylor. And he keeps it, gets to the 46-yard line. He's drilled there by linebacker Bill Mitchell, number 56. Mickey and Carlson, both these quarterbacks, can run the ball if necessary for the Baylor Bears. They're both quick. And Vince Dooley was not exaggerating about the team speed of this Baylor Bear football team. Talking to Cotton Davidson, the offensive coordinator, or really coaches the quarterbacks and the receivers, but is very involved in the play calling. They said they're going to air it out early and show this Georgia defense that they do have some speed, try to back them off a little bit. Pruitt and Clark both split out wide to the top of your screen on the second down, 17 to 46. Mickey. Incomplete intended for Clark. Clark was open at the 27-yard line, but Mickey just rifled that ball right between his arms. Clark's kind of an interesting player. He's, he'd be an all-utility team as Vince Dooley looks on there. Vince is obviously the dean of the Southeast Conference coaches. Grant Taft is establishing Baylor now as a football team to be respected. Third down, seven. Baylor from the 46 of Georgia. Opening moments of play from Sanford Stadium in Athens, Georgia. 11.22 to go in the first quarter. Three wide receivers to the far side of the field. No running backs. Mickey the 46-yard line. First man back was Henry Harris. He was aided by defensive end Greg Waters, and Mickey goes down. Seven-yard loss. Henry Harris coming in there. Kenny Sims, number 57, working against that Baylor offense. And Harris comes around the outside, and Muddy Waters fills in through the middle. And one thing that Bill Lewis mentioned is they wanted to see if Baylor could protect their quarterback. Another very good punter, Buzzy Sawyer, gets off a cannon shot, but it doesn't have much hang time. John Little, number 19 for Georgia, gets to the 18-yard line. And there, the Georgia Bulldogs will go on offense after the 42-yard punt under pressure from Buzzy Sawyer, who led the Southwest Conference in punting last year. We'll be back to Sanford Stadium. This is Turner Network Television. Yes, folks. That is a real bear. <laughs> Grady, the Baylor bear, made the trip all the way from Waco. I wonder if Ugga, the bulldog mascot on the other side of the field, is intimidated by that bear. I doubt it. Ugga is often not intimidated. First down 10, Georgia, from the 19. Here's the freshman, Henderson. No gain. Maybe loses a little bit as Georgia tries to get it outside of the left. Henderson is a player that Vince Dooley likes, a freshman from Cartersville, Georgia. Vince says he thinks he has the natural running back instincts. They're going to say he lost a yard. It'll be second down 11. You're going to see Georgia this game alternate their running backs by series. Two freshmen will play together, and then Tate McCluskey will be in there together. Henderson and Worley. Worley, the tailback. Play fake. Johnson throwing. Incomplete looking for Henderson. And Georgia will have it third down 11 now from the 18-yard line. So the Bulldogs sputtering on offense here as they open this ball game, but of course so did Baylor. Little play pass action. They look for Archie on the curl. Good job of coverage by Johnny Thomas. Robert Waters running with the back in the flat. Wayne Johnson, intelligent decision. Throw it out of bounds. Third down 11. See what Baylor does defensively here, Tim Foley. Georgia with one setback. That's Henderson. They have uh, the tailback Worley in motion from the left wing. Here's Keith Henderson. Doesn't get the first down. Runs it out to the 23-yard line. Georgia playing it conservatively on third down and long. And in comes the punter, Chris Carpenter. We hear a few scattered boos here at Sanford Stadium already. As I say, these Georgia fans are not used to losing at the hedges, and Georgia's lost their last two times they played here. Yeah, but when you're on your own 20-yard line, they ought, and it's third and 11, and you've got a freshman quarterback, they ought to be used to running the ball or running a draw. They don't want to put the defense in a situation where they're overburdened early on in a football game. So be conservative. Wait till you get your shot in good field position. Carpenter under pressure. They run into him. There is no flag. Fair catch by Everett. 
at the 30-yard line. One of the Baylor players did run into Chris Carpenter. He grabbed him as he ran into him, however, and there was no penalty marker down. A 47-yard punt under pressure by Chris Carpenter. Here it is again, Tim. Watch for Francis. They're putting a rush on. Good pressure by uh, Baylor, and it looked like he ran into him there. And I don't know if you can get a... He should have held him up. Can you get a penalty for hugging? <laughs> we'll find out when we return to Sanford Stadium in a moment. City feet, country feet, fleet feet, neat feet. No matter how you treat your feet, Dr. Scholl's makes you feel like dancing with double comfort air pillow insoles. Hidden comfort half insoles for high heel shoes. Workday insoles for hard working feet. Scented Christ step insoles. Tired feet, active feet. Dr. Scholl's has all kinds of comfort for all kinds of feet. Right here. Dr. Scholl's makes you feel like dancing. Buick Century. It's one of the rewards you get for playing the game and winning. Buick Century. Rewarding to drive. Now available with 7.7% financing. Wouldn't you really rather have a Buick? Well, here it is again, Chris Carpenter. You will watch, there is definite contact here by number 11, Ron Francis. This one certainly could have been called, Bob. Francis in there trying to make the play, trying to hold him up, keep him off the ground, but Carpenter goes down, and there was contact on that play. Unless uh, the ball was touched or he was blocked into the punter, contact can be called running into the punter. Nevertheless, it is not called, and Baylor has the ball at the 30-yard line. First down, 10. Mark that. The Bulldogs with great penetration, and Robert Williams is going to lose two or three yards. There were four red shirts back there. The first guy was Henry Harris, 52. Jake Richardson with good penetration. Richardson is playing hobbled, has had problem with the knee, and Henry Harris and Kenny Sims are really the leaders in that defensive line. It was Henry Harris that disrupted the pattern of that play, and Kirby Stewart came in and put him away. Second down, 12 Baylor from their own 29. Only 8.49 to go in the first quarter. Clock ticking fast in this first quarter. Neither team able to move the ball very well. There already been three punts. Nicky, incomplete. Intended for 17, Leland Douglas, junior from Beaumont, Texas, out here at the 40-yard line. And Baylor comes up with another third down long situation. You're going to watch John Little here underneath. He's trailing him man-to-man -man underneath. Look at him sit on that inside hip, playing it perfectly. Now the ball is being delivered. He gets his head and shoulders around. Played perfectly. Nice throw by Mickey. If you're going to come with that ball, it's got... He, see, he saw Douglas on the outside, and you've got to lay it a little bit over the outside shoulder. Mickey, two out of four for 37 yards in this game on third and 12. Blitz coming. Mickey running for his life. Look at that good speed. It's incomplete. Good defensive play by Gary Moss, number three, tipping it away before 25 Glenn Pruitt could get his hands on it. And Gary Moss, the junior from Cleveland, Georgia, with a good play. Good quarterback pressure there by John Brantley. Really an interesting development on defense. Brantley did not come right away. The back that was keying him, that was responsible for blocking him, went out into the pattern. Then Brantley chased down Mickey. Got the ball off nicely, though, incomplete. Here's the punt by Buzzy Sawyer. Little at his 20 with a fair catch. Georgia gets an opportunity again. Scoreless ball game. 8-19 to go, quarter number one. Both defensive teams have played well, and that punt was a 51-yarder by Buzzy Sawyer. And Vince Dooley, the dean of coaches in the Southeastern Conference. 168 wins. That puts him third among active coaches today for the most victories. The winningest coach in the state of Georgia surpassed Bobby Dodd last year, who had 165 wins. From the 20, first down 10, Georgia out of that eye formation. Sadowski moving from right to left in the tight end position. Complete to his fullback to the 27 yard line, David McCluskey, and there he goes out of bounds. There's Grant speaking of veteran coaches. 
Grant Taft from Baylor in 1972. It was his first game as head coach when Baylor played here. Good look at the Baylor defense and McCluskey, 43, coming out of the backfield. You saw Ray Berry get sucked in a little bit on that play action. Ray Berry has, although he's a great linebacker, has missed some practice in the fall due to a pulled up quad muscle, and he's seeing really his second week of practice. Second down three. Close to the first down goes Lars Tate, a 210-pound tailback. Uh, let's see where they spot it. I believe he's going to be short. He is shy of the 30-yard line. It will be third down and about a yard for the Georgia Bulldogs. No first down conversions yet for Georgia. Well, these, these schools have produced some running backs, Bob. Baylor has more running backs in the NFL than any other college football teams. And, of course, oh, Herschel's running around up there somewhere. Blaylock and Hockaday, the wide receivers for Georgia at the left side. They give to the tailback. Worley drives, excuse me, Lars Tate. He drives off left guard and gets the first down. Trey Crouch with the tackle, number 54 for Baylor. The big Lars Tate picks up the first down for the Bulldogs, the first one of the afternoon. This is a game where you have to be conservative on offense. You know, far be it from Ben Stooley to be conservative on offense, but this is a game where it serves him well simply because he's got that inexperienced secondary going against a powerful Baylor offense. Now Lane and Blaylock on the left side, but Wayne Johnson keeps it to run to the right side. He was looking for the option to Lars Tate, but it was shut off, and Allen Jamison, 47, makes the stop for Baylor. Wayne Johnson can run the option. If they're, if they're gonna run the option, they like Jackson, though on a consistent basis. He's got the great feet. Wayne Johnson is going to develop into more of a drop back, strong arm passer for Georgia. Certainly not in the characteristic mold of Georgia quarterbacks. Second down, 10 from the 32. The tailback, Lars Tate, fights his way to the 34-yard line. And now we're going to switch to our studios in Atlanta. In our syndicated Big Ten game, it's Michigan State playing Arizona State. Michigan State's Lorenzo White takes a pitch out from quarterback Dave Urema. Goes up the sideline, 42 yards for a touchdown. The point after was no good. It's Michigan State, six Arizona State, nothing. Thank you, Alec Hawkins. Third down eight, Georgia from the 34. Scoreless game here in Athens, Georgia. Baylor and Georgia. Johnson, good protection. It's McCluskey. Short of the first down, gain of only two out to the 37. And Georgia will have to punt the ball again. Chris Carpenter has been a busy guy this afternoon. One thing that's evident, Bob, is that Baylor's linebackers, both Barry and Jamison, have been very aggressive upfield. Look for Georgia the next time they get possession of the football to do some play action and try to hit some receivers down the middle. Carpenter is averaging 40 yards a punt. This is his third punt of the afternoon already over the first quarter. Everett has not had a chance to return a ball yet. Let's see if he tries this one. Great punt here. Everett from his 15. Balls on it at the 13. That ball was high and floating around. A 46-yard punt by Chris Carpenter. Everett maintains possession, but does not get any return at all. This is Turner Network Television. Now Baylor's number two quarterback, actually his alternate quarterback. <laughs> no, neither one of these guys are number one or two. Cody Carlson, number 14 in the game. He was six out of 12 for 89 yards and two touchdowns against Wyoming. Cody Carlson is a junior from San Antonio, Texas. Had a great freshman season for Baylor two years ago. Now Sargent and Ball are in the backfield for Baylor. Hand off the ball. Across the 15 to the 17 yard line. Steve Boswell with the tackle for Georgia. Boswell just making a slow return for Georgia after cutting his foot. Ball had a 77-yard run last week against Wyoming. Jackie Ball is a defensive back last year. They moved him to uh, running back and averaged 27 yards a carry versus Wyoming. Second down six, Baylor from the 17-yard line. Split back veer offense is what they call it. off right over right guard to the 19-yard line goes Broderick Sargent from Wachi, Texas. Waxahachie, Texas, excuse me. 5'10", 210. They don't call them tailbacks and fullbacks in this offense. They're left halfback and right halfback. 
We talked about last year they were an eye football team for the last couple of years, and that was to take advantage of Albert Anderson, who is a tremendous eye back. You know, eye back is a more of a power back, a slashing runner. They've got the quickness in these backs to play that split back here. Third down two from the 19. Big conversion play for the Beta Bears. Play fake. Screen pass right side to Sargent. He's got the first down. He one yard line of Georgia. Miles Smith with the tackle. You see a great block here by John Attic Center, who does a nice as well. Look at Boswell coming in here. He fights off Leland Douglas and then runs into Attic. Bates and Kyle Lane turn it up the field, leading the way for Broderick Sargent. Baylor out to the 31-yard line. Scoreless game, four minutes to go. Quarter number one from Sanford State. Nippy, fall-like afternoon, 65 degrees. Winds out of the northeast at 10 to 20 miles an hour at Sanford Stadium. First down, 10. Carlson. Throws it out of bounds wisely over here. He was looking for Leland, but he was double covered. Good quarterback pressure on him by Kenny Sims. May have caused him to have to throw the ball up so high. Once again, deep zone by Georgia, and they were trying to sift that slot back up through the middle. Good pressure didn't allow Carlson enough time to unload that ball. Very unusual offense by Grant Taft. He has two complete units that come in and out of the ball game. Offensive line was backs everything. They make it work, Bill. Second down 10. Looking for ball out of the backfield, just didn't hit him. He was open momentarily, Brantley covering. Bob, what, what they're doing there, as you can see, motion out of the backfield left. And uh, now Bill Lewis, the defensive coordinator from Georgia, has to make a decision. Does he want to run those linebackers out quarterback draw or something quick up the middle? Does he want those linebackers running with those fleet-footed running backs trying to cover them all over the field or is he going to play a zone that's the decision that bill lewis is making on every play third down 10 baylor excuse me 10 from the 31 yard line baylor one out of three on third down conversions five defensive Carlson throws this one high and out of bounds as he's under pressure once again this time greg waters nails carlson as he throws it and baylor will have to punt the ball again Nice job of covering Carlson, set up back there, ready to throw. Nobody open, so he throws it up in the first row here. Buzzy Sawyer led the Southwest Conference last year, his third punt of the day. It's a good one. John Little with the fair catch at the 33 yard line of Georgia. Georgia field position moving up a little bit on every one of these possessions, and they'll start here in pretty good shape at their 33 and a half yard line. 320 to go in quarter number one. It is not a sellout at Sanford Stadium. This place seats 82,000. They're expecting about 75,000. Georgia students not yet back to class on the quarter system here at the University of Georgia. But a rare occasion when this place isn't sold off. Sold out. Out to the 41-yard line. Keith Henderson goes. Gain about seven. You just saw a shot of Bill Lewis, the defensive coordinator here at Georgia, and the secondary coach talking to his secondary, talking to his linebackers. They've done a fine job so far. And they are vulnerable going into this game against this powerful Baylor offense. Second down two from the 42. The backfield of the future, as Vince Dooley likes to call them in there for Georgia. Henderson and Worley. Behind Wayne Johnson. Here's Big Tim Worley. He's tough to the 47-yard line of Baylor. First down, Georgia. Ron Francis with the tackle. Worley, 6'2", 210 from Lumberton. Highly recruited nationally. Gets an 11-yard gain. Watch Troy Sadowski here. He holds off the defensive end, stays with him, works him to the outside. Worley finds it back inside, and Russ Francis makes a touchdown-saving tackle right there as Worley was on the way. From the 47th, scoreless ball game, 2.29 to go, quarter number one. Worley up the middle to the 44-yard line. Tripped up by Alan Jamison, number 47, the middle linebacker. Baylor with a classic 4-3 defensive alignment. Well, Alan Jamison was quite a story for Baylor. Last year, which would have been his senior year, he saw himself splitting time with Kevin Hancock, so he decided to redshirt. He ran linebacker on the scout team all year, gained the respect of his teammates. He's a defensive captain this year. Second down seven. That's Freddie Lane in motion from the 44. Well, up to the front man. That's the pullback. Freshman Keith Henderson. 
Georgia fans will remember Andre Colquitt Smith running very effectively on that play for Georgia last year. He left school because of academic reasons, and they're hoping Henderson can replace him out of that quick fullback position for Georgia. He's a great All-American as a high school senior, rushed for over 2,000 yards. Bob, as a junior in high school, hurt his ankle, thought about giving up football, decided to come back, and Georgia's first and 10 from the 33 of Baylor. There's a reverse delay. Kevin Butler now kicking for the Chicago Bears. Carpenter holds. The old-fashioned way works also, and Georgia takes a 7 to nothing lead with 1 minute 27 seconds. Ready Lane, all 5-9 of it, scores for Georgia. You're going to see this once again from Georgia. Faking the toss, and here comes Freddie going the other way. A nice job of, by Derek Turner of Baylor. He turns the play in. He does his job. Now Johnny Thomas, 41, gets sucked inside. A couple of good blocks by those Georgia linemen downfield, and Freddie Lane's gone. Cutting back, there's Pete, Pete Anderson out front there, and number 69, Mac Furrows. Tying up those cornerbacks for Baylor, and now Freddie Lane's off to the races. Archie down there gets in the way of Thomas said for Everett, but it was over by then. Freddie Lane from Decatur, Georgia, only 168 pounds. <laughs> Georgia takes the lead. 127 to go in the first quarter of play. Randy Rutledge, number 45, and number 26, Derek McAdoo, are back deep for Georgia. Here's the kickoff. It is high but short, coming down to McAdoo at the seven. To the 20, and down he goes. Initial contact by Aaron Chubb. 13-yard return, and Baylor trailing now for the first time the game. Goes on offense right from their 20-yard line. First down, 10. Georgia uncranking that eye running game to get that drive started and score the touchdown. But big Tim Worley running effectively up the middle. This Georgia football team's under a lot of pressure. The last five times they've gone on the football field, they've come out of it without a victory. It's been since 1979 since that happened. First and ten. Baylor Bears. Carlson still the quarterback. Out to the 27-yard line goes Robert Williams, number 22. Baylor plays as many as seven running backs in this game. Williams started at the right halfback position, is back in there. So it's Williams and McAdoo, and then it's Ball and Sargent when they alternate. There's the scoring drive. Five plays, 66 yards, 33-yard touchdown run by Lane. Also a good run. I mentioned that Tim Worley had run effectively, but so did Keith Henderson. Second and fourth for the 27. Carlson. Quick opener to Broderick Sargent, who gets up close to the first down across the 30-yard line. Let me point out something that's happening here, Bob. Bill Lewis, defensive coordinator for Georgia, is protecting his cornerbacks. The weak side corner, which often last year was left on an island because it was Tony Black, they had confidence in his man-to-man -man ability, is now being aided by John Little. You'll see John Little shifting out and lining up on the split end. Watch for that. Three wide receivers in the ball game now for Baylor on first and 10 from the 32. Eights in motion to the bottom of your screen. Here's a pitch to Williams. Williams to the 41-yard line, just shy of the first down marker. Hit hard by 99, Jake Richardson and 16, Michael Willis. Nine-yard run. Often Carlson, as you see this play come at you, he takes a real shot. They're trying to get his attention. The ball comes back as Georgia makes tremendous penetration. But you'll see Carlson 
calling those plays from the line of scrimmage. He'll come to the line of scrimmage, and then at the line of scrimmage, he'll call left or right. And that's the end of the first quarter of play. This is Turner Network Television. Today's game is brought to you in part by Buick and your local Buick dealers. For comfort, innovation, and a real commitment to quality, it's today's Buick. Georgia leads 7-0 on a 33-yard end-around touchdown run by receiver Freddie Lane. Toward the end of the first quarter, we're beginning the second quarter of play. Baylor, second down one from the 41. Carlson hands it off to Williams, who gets the first down by inches. Robert Williams tackled by 70 Kirby Stewart of Georgia. The Baylor keeps their drive alive, I believe. Yes, they do. He did get the first down just by inches. Georgia playing a lot of players up front. We've seen so far nine different players on the defensive front for Georgia. Vince Dooley said it was a no-name team. He's playing a lot of players. First and 10 from the 43. Threw it in motion. Here's a pitch to McAdoo. Hit in the backfield. He's going to be stopped for the loss. Initial hit by number three, Gary Moss. He was finished off by Waters, 59. They call him Muddy Waters. You're going to see Henry Williams get in Carlson's face right away. Here's how you get to that fear. You want to get what they call the mesh point before the quarterback really has time, has time to let the play develop. And that's what's happening there. You see McAdoo going down to the turf. Sounds of Greg Muddy Waters. Of course, you can guess how he got his nickname Muddy. Plays better in the mud. I always played better in the mud as a kid. Second down 10 from the 43, Carlson. Couldn't find anybody. Excellent coverage, and he was also under tremendous pressure. Mitchell, 56, was covering Williams out of the backfield. But Carlson was just staring at some red jerseys. We're going to watch the pass rush of Georgia's best pass rusher, Muddy Waters. Fighting his way upfield, he gains it with Kenny Sims and takes Carlson down. Billy Mitchell was in trouble. Robert Williams was behind him, heading down the field. And <laughs> that's one of those ones you take a deep breath after it's an incomplete pass. On a third down 10, five defensive backs into the ball game for Georgia. Third down 10 from the 43 for Baylor. Two receivers left, one right. Split backs. Everybody's out for the pass. Incomplete intended for Williams. Couldn't hold on to it. He would not have achieved the first down in all probability. He caught it at the line of scrimmage. And now the Georgia defense has held at midfield. If you look at Temple leading Penn State 3 to nothing in the first quarter. And the fourth punt of the afternoon for Buzzy Sawyer. Michigan State now tacked a field goal onto the Tech and North Carolina State tied. That's being played in Raleigh today. Season opener for Georgia Tech. NC State lost their opener to East Carolina. Here's John Little. Out to the 29-yard line. Roderick Sargent with the tackle for Baylor. So Georgia leads 7-0 with 13.32 to go in the first half. The Bulldogs come back on offense. We'll set that offense for you when we return. <laughs> 75,000 folks at Sanford Stadium, Athens, Georgia. 13.32 to go. Second quarter, Georgia leads 7-0. They have possession of the ball. First down 10 from their 29. Here's Mars Tate. First penalty flag we've seen today goes down at the same time does Tate at the 31. Like Baylor jumped off sides there, Bob. Uh, by the way, thus far after the first quarter, that's the call. Georgia has rushed for 81 yards and passed for 11 yards. Of course, there was a lot of speculation that Coach Vince Dooley would come in here and start winging that ball. I'll have to see Vince Dooley go to a passing-oriented attack before I believe it. What were we talking to him about how many wide receivers he had lead the league in pass receiving? Yeah, right. <laughs> he looked I mean, it he, up. Was, he was telling us that the strength of his offense was, was his right, wide receivers. Now, that's like Don Coriel saying the strength of his offense in San Diego is uh, his fullback. <laughs> Georgia first and five from the 34 after the penalty. Receivers both from the left side. This time, plenty of time. by Francis, tipped by Everett. Number 11, Francis with the ball to the 33-yard line. Talk about spectacular, tipped by 27, Everett, and then picked out of the ground by Ron Francis, 11, a converted running back. 14-yard return. Penalty marker, however, is down back at the 33-yard line, so hold everything. It's going to be holding on Georgia. Remember, we talked about the play pass coming. 
I'm surprised they decided to go deep, but I think they're trying to loosen that Baylor secondary up. Pops the ball, and what, Ron, Ronnie Francis comes along, who last year was Baylor's leading ground gainer. They moved him back over to defense, and he makes the catch. Holding on Georgia, penalty is declined. That pass really nowhere near the Georgia receiver, as you watch here. They tried to suck in the cornerback and run Lane down the sideline. And uh, Thomas Everett just runs free back there, is reading Wayne Johnson all the way. But Ron Francis was in good shape all the way on Freddie Lane. What a play by Ron Francis. And the heart surgery. Ball out, first down 10 for 33. And we have Mickey back in at quarterback. Sergeant gets very little, if any. Georgia leads 7 0, 12 23 to go, second quarter. And there's the hero with good hands, Ron Francis. Last year, their secondary took a lot of heat. They started the season, Baylor's secondary, started the season first year coach and a lot of new players. And of course, Bosco made a lot of people look sad last year, but they fought their way and gained respect back, gained respectability toward the end of the year. Nobody there for Tom Mickey. He's down at the 29, tackled by 39, Andy Loy of Georgia. Mickey turned around to pitch the ball. <laughs> Nobody was there but Andy Loy. Watch this. He turns around and nobody's home. It looked like he was trying to stick the ball in there to Broderick Sargent. I think Sargent made an error and was supposed to receive the football. Just a quick dive, a quick pop. It's third and 13. Split back veer offense for Baylor from the 30. Strict drop. Mickey right over the middle. It's wide open to Leland Douglas. First down at the 50-yard line. Leland Douglas, a slimmer, trimmer, leaner, meaner Leland Douglas with the reception, and a big one. We're going to get to watch the secondary here. What we've got is a five underneath, three deep zone. There's always that area between the linebackers and the secondary. Linebackers way too short on that particular pass pattern. They should have been much deeper. Third and 11, come on now, get back out of there. Let them run the ball, let them throw it in front of you. Nobody in the backfield on first down. Ball swings to the left side. They toss it right over to the left side on a quick toss to 34, Kobe Forns, the tight end, the sophomore, and Boswell with a tackle for Georgia. Forns is a good one, a sophomore from used to play with Grant Taft. Used to play with Grant Taft, used to coach with Grant Taft, and I think Grant's kind of a father figure for him. Forns is it's not really as big as you'd like a tight end to be, but he's a good receiver, and it, he'll get in your way when it comes to blocking. Speaking of tight ends, Georgia short in the tight end department this year. They had some great ones. Clarence K, Ulysses Norris, Norris Brown have gone on to pro football, but this year a, a weak department for the Georgia Bulldogs. First down, 10. Baylor driving. 44 to go, second quarter. Ball in motion out of backfield. Mickey complete to Leland Douglas at the 38. A gain of only a couple. Moss covering on the play. Good pass coverage by Georgia that time, Tim. Excellent pass coverage and great pressure. Neither Mickey or Carlson is really getting time to set up. Baylor's patterns don't have an opportunity to develop downfield because of the tremendous pressure being applied by Williams and Harrison Sims. Tom Mickey is now five out of eight for 70 yards. Clark Douglas eights. Three wideouts in for Baylor on second and eight from the 38 of Georgia. Mickey keeps it, gets nowhere, down at the 37. 57, Kenny Sims, the senior from Greenville, South Carolina, with the tackle for the Georgia Bulldogs. And Sims is a pro prospect, 6'3", 265. He'll get a good look from professional scout. Probably a third, fourth round choice in the eyes of most. I think a turning point for this defensive line came in a, in a spring scrimmage. The offense scored 13 touchdowns against the defense. Steve Greer, the defensive line coach, pulled those folks together, and the next time out, the offense didn't even get a first down, and since that time, they've developed a lot of pride as a unit. Third and seven from the 37. Mickey has his man incomplete. It may have been tipped by 19 Little, intended for 25 Pruitt. Bears can't convert. Now they're in one of those, they're in that funny place in the field at the 37 where it's tough to kick a field goal, but not a good place to punt either. John Little is in a trail technique there. Head back on the ball, nice job by a linebacker. He tipped the ball, I think, knocked the ball out of there as uh, Miles Smith comes in and gets his hat on Pruitt. 
Well, it's fourth down and seven, Tim, but Baylor has called a timeout with 9.15 to go in this second quarter. Mickey has gone to the sideline. There's a possibility Baylor might try to do something unusual here. We'll see when we return. This is Turner Network Television. Five, two, three, three. So after the timeout, Baylor did decide that discretion would be the better part of valor here. On fourth and seven, Buzzy Sawyer is going to punt. He's going for the corner, of course. Oh, and he got the corner. They're going to spot that ball out of bounds at about the one-yard line. You see the foot of the official on the sideline. A great job by all-Southwest Conference punter, Buzzy Sawyer. Only 36 yards, but very effective. Here it is again. Great job. This obviously really puts you in a hole as far as the offense goes uh, for Georgia, and it could be a real lift to the Baylor defense. Baylor defense has been, has been playing well, good football today. They've been three and out several times, and that's the goal of the defense. Get that offense to run three plays and get off the field. Three freshmen back there, Johnson, Henderson, and Worley. Johnson gets it out to about the four. He's tripped up by 97, Kevin Marsh. Dangerous territory for the Bulldogs. They lead 7 0, 852 to go, second quarter. Wayne Johnson, the redshirt freshman, 6'4, 195. Actually, he's up to about 200 now. As a defensive back, what you should be thinking in this situation is you're thinking deep. This is the time when an offense can just drop back and crank one up, see how far the quarterback can throw. Here's Henderson to the nine yard line. First down sticks out of the 11, just shy of the 11, actually. So it'll be third down and about two now for Georgia. You take a look at Georgia Junkyard Dogs. There's Bill Lewis down there in the center. Was a head coach at Wyoming for three years. Came to Georgia as a defensive coordinator and secondary coach. Has done an excellent job. A very aggressive defensive caller. Likes to blitz. Likes to put pressure on the opposing quarterbacks. And Georgia has done that today. Third down two from the nine. Double tight end for Georgia. Hand off to Henderson, the fullback. He did not get out of there. He is down at the 10, shy of the first down. So Georgia's going to have to punt the ball out of their own end zone. They do have a guy who can just hit cannon shots, Chris Carpenter, freshman from Gainesville, Georgia, who's a very excellent athlete. He'll be punting out of his end zone, though. He's going to be punting out of his end zone. He's got a little bit of wind, and he's got an awfully dangerous return man now drifting back to about the 50-yard line. Thomas said Everett ripped off a 75-yarder last year, and he just always seems to come up with a big play for the Baylor defense. Let's see what happens here. Okay, folks, you be the punter. Not me, that's for sure. You get his view of it. Carpenter gets away a beauty. Oh, my, oh, my. Back to the 34-yard line goes Everett, but he's so dangerous. And down at the 41-yard line, Thomas Everett tackled by 54, Vince Guthrie. It was a 56-yard punt and an excellent return by Thomas Everett. Good field position for the Baylor Bears, trailing 7 to nothing. You see Mangrum, number 22, Henderson down there in good shape. Mangrum misses. Nice block on Henderson. And now here's the problem. They get outside the contain on, on the punt coverage. There should be one man out there on Georgia who funnels that back into the rest of his teammates. Everett got outside that man, and as a result, ran off a few yards in that punt return. Exactly 24 yards on the punt return. First and 10, Baylor from the 41 of Georgia. Quick opener. Goes to Robert Williams. He gets a couple of yards inside the 40 to the 38-yard line. Excellent field position. As you look at Ugga, Georgia's bear, the actual live Baylor bears here. We have a real battle with live mascots. Second down eight from the 39 of Georgia. Excellent defensive play by 97, Paul Giles. Just into the game for Georgia. I was searching for that name myself, uh, Bob. He's a freshman and uh, not on my depth chart. Jake Richardson, as we mentioned earlier, has had a knee problem and uh, hasn't been able to practice much. Henry Williams has been playing well. They're spelling him with Paul Giles, the freshman, and Giles has come in and made a couple of really nice plays. I believe our spotter, Kim Anderson, is mentally telepathic. He just seems to know. 
<laughs> He's from uh, Giles, by the way, is from Monroe, Georgia. Is a freshman. Mickey with all day to throw incomplete at the 28-yard line on the third down and ten. Little was covering 17. Leland Douglas. So after the excellent punt return, Georgia defense led by 19. John Little. Watch this now. Little's job is to keep him out of the middle of the field and trail him. He's got deep help. Good job by John Little. All across the board, the Georgia underneath people, Brantley and Magrum on the other side, were in good position. It was a three-deep zone backing it up. There's Sawyer trying to angle this one out. Into the end zone for the touchback. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. One of the Georgia players may have run into Sawyer. This play just may come back. Sawyer hit the deck after the punt. Earlier, Ron Francis ran into Georgia's punter, Chris Carpenter. And there was no, punter, uh, no penalty flag, but this time there is one, and it is going to remain Baylor ball. Mm. Oh, whoa. Took a shot in the head with a foot. That was 28 Aaron Chubb, but did he get blocked into it? Yes. He certainly got blocked into him, though. I think the determination was that he would have made contact anyway. What was happening there for a while in college football and in professional football is that people were taking on that up back and just using that as license to abuse the punter. So I think they must have determined that his angle was going to take him into the punter whether he was blocked or not. We're going to pause five seconds for station identification. First and 10 at the 25, Mickey. Complete to Clark and out of bounds at the 16-yard line. Willis covering on the play. 11-yard return or 11-yard pass reception. Let's take a look at the blocking on the man who hit the punter. Let's just watch it one more time. I think it's Tony Mangrum. Is that number 22 flying over? I believe it's 28 Aaron Chubb, Jim. Aaron Chubb, good. And that must have been the determination by the official that he was going to make contact whether he was blocked or not. Second down one for Baylor. Hand off to Sargent. Gets the first down. Down to the 14-yard line go the Baylor Bears. Henry Harris with the tackle. Georgia leads 7-0. 5.24 to go in the first half. Thanks to the roughing, the punter called Baylor is driving. This has been about as even a football game as we expected. Georgia, a less than touchdown favorite going into the ball game, and they're leading by seven. Baylor threatening. On the first down, Mickey showing good quickness to the five-yard line. Kenny Sims with a tackle for Georgia. It's close to the first down. The stick is just inside the five at about the four and a half, so it's a half a yard away from a first down. Mickey, a little bit better runner than Carlson displaying some quickness and another thing that I think that you can look for from these Baylor quarterbacks is Georgia rushing only three people running man to man underneath a lot those underneath people lose vision on the quarterback and sooner or later you're gonna see a quarterback draw Roderick Sargent number 30 and number two ball in the backfield Tom Mickey the quarterback for Baylor double tight ends into the end zone incomplete excellent defensive play by 16 Michael Willis intended for 25 Glenn Pruitt and former pro quarterback Tim Foley with a round of applause I see Tim for Michael Willis's nice play <laughs> nice play by Michael Willis the quarterback wants to air this ball out a little bit more Tom Mickey should get a little bit more height on this football leading the receiver toward the corner of the end zone away from the defender Third down one now. This is a tough third down situation for Baylor with the incomplete pass. One receiver split wide on the left side. Quick handoff to ball, dives over the center and the right guard, Addison Bates, and let's see if he gets it. I think he got the first down. We'll wait for the mark by the officials. It appears as if he did get the first down. Yes, George, uh, Georgia gives up the first down. It'll be Baylor ball at the Georgia three-yard line. 4.17 to go first half. There is no lonelier feeling than being a cornerback out in that wide receiver in this goal line situation. You've got 20 guys huddled around that ball, and you're out there on your own. Jackie Ball and Broderick Sargent. Mickey on the keeper, breaks a tackle, gets to the one. Tom Mickey. The ball came loose. However, there is no 
official signal from the officials. I believe it remained in the possession. And I did I see a yellow flag go down over there? Yes, there is a penalty marker in the Georgia end zone. The ball remains in the possession of Baylor. Unsportsmanlike conduct against Georgia. The penalty will not be very severe. It's half the distance, so it'll be half a yard. Boswell going out of the game. I don't know if he was the man who had the flag thrown at him. Let's watch this again. I, I think it was probably. Look at Boswell comes up here and fills that thing. That's the type of young man that plays with reckless abandon. Has had to overcome a lot of adversity this year as the ball comes out. Looked like his knees were down, but Boswell is an emotional player. And thought they had made a big play, and I'm sure he expressed his feelings to the official. And Second down, goal, Baylor. Power backfield. Touchdown, Baylor, number 21, Ralph Stockhammer, the 225-pound fullback type senior. And Baylor pulls to within a 7-6 score of Georgia key play on this Baylor drive was the roughing the punter call against the University of Georgia. Just straight ahead behind Kyle Lane and Attucks, Joel Porter. Stockmer keeps his feet. Stockmer was a tailback last year, and he probably was hurt more than anyone else with this shift, shift to the uh, he is an I type. Tyler with the point after. It is up and good. with 3.26 to go in the first half. Georgia 7, Baylor 7. Touchdown run of a half yard by Ralph Stockhammer over the left side, and Baylor is tied the Bulldogs. So we have a tie ball game with only 3.25 to go in the first half. Baylor and Georgia. Southwest Conference Baylor and Southeastern Conference Georgia. Baylor closed strong at the end of the year last year. You saw briefly the scoring drive there, 41-yard scoring Freddie Lane on the right side, number four, number 25, Tron Jackson on the left side for Georgia. Kick off. The goal line, and here comes Tron Jackson. They call him Electron Jackson. Pulled down by the kicker, Jim Mueller. Kickoff return. Another great job by the Georgia kickoff return team. Jackson pulls it out of the end zone. Freddie Lane leading the way. Fighting his way up the sideline. There's Johnny Thomas there trying to turn it back to the inside. Gerald Chase and finally the tackle is made by the kicker. Georgia ball, first and 10 at the 36-yard line. Handoff McCluskey gets to the 32-yard line. So Georgia comes storming back on the 64-yard return by Tron Jackson, senior from Liberty, South Carolina. And Vince Dooley was just commenting on the progress, not only as a football player, but a person that that young man has made since he's been here at Georgia. Second down, six from the 32. Lane goes wide to the right side, play lock to the left side. There's that Baylor scoring drive. Took three minutes, 40 seconds. Lars Tate in motion. Hand off McCluskey. He's got a big open. To the 18-yard line, junior David McCluskey from Rome, Georgia. 15 yards. Good job of cross-blocking by Strozier and... Kim Stevens, look at Vic Perry hustling downfield. That's what needs to happen. Robert Waters chasing him down from the back. At the 17 is where they spot the ball. First down, 10 Bulldog. 2.28 to go first half. Tied 7-7. Lane in motion. Mars Tate hit behind the line and driven down. That'll mark his forward progress inside the 20 at about the 19-yard line. Loss of one. Grumbine 77 and 54. Crouch with a stop for Baylor. That Grumbine's a player, Tim. Yes, he is. They rotated four tackles last year. They have ended up ranked ninth nationally in the country in preventing the rush. He is the only tackle that returned, and he has got to develop, or he already is. He isn't developing. He's already developed into a fine player and the leader of that defensive front. Second down, 12, Georgia at the 19. Lane and Archie are the receivers. Wayne Johnson, Tron Jackson's in at running back, too. Incomplete. He had Lane and 
and Tron Jackson lined up kind of in an eye down there about the five and about five yards into the end zone. Good coverage by Thomas Everett. Thomas Everett was sitting back in there. They tried to run the slot back into the corner of the end zone. Everett playing it smart. But Robert Waters tipped the ball or Everett would have had an interception. And the Georgia Bulldogs, red shirt freshman quarterback Wayne Johnson has called timeout on this third down 12 situation for the Bulldogs at the 19th of Baylor. 1.34 to go in the half and he's over talking to the brain trust of the Bulldogs. This is Turner Network Television. 12 at the Baylor 19, Tim Foley, what do you call here? Most teams like the crossing patterns down here in the corner of the end zone. How could they in a position to come back in motion? They've got their two best pass receivers in there running back. Johnson play fake. It's complete, but out of bounds to Hockaday. It was an incompletion. Hockaday came down out of bounds. He was being covered by 27 Thomas ever. So in comes the Georgia field goal unit. Steve Crumley, the freshman from Athens, Georgia. Not even close as Ted Davis makes the call. That referee in the back of your picture there was Ted Davis, played linebacker with the Baltimore Colts and the Miami Dolphins, New Orleans Saints. So we can't say anything bad about the officials today. 36-yard attempt here by Steve Crumley. His second attempt of the year. He hit one against Alabama. And this one is wide to the left side. So the young freshman who's wearing the number of Kevin Butler under a lot of pressure to replace such a great kicker misses this attempt and this game remains tied. Georgia misses a golden opportunity after a 64-yard kickoff return by Tron Jackson. The Bulldogs unable to get it into the end zone are between the crossbars and with a minute 23 remaining in the first half, this game remains tied 7-7. Our football Saturday coverage continues tonight from Columbus, Ohio. The 19th ranked Pitt Panthers and the Ohio State Buckeyes. Lindsey Nelson, Paul Hornick will have that game for you beginning at 8 o'clock Eastern time. That will be a dandy, folks. Pitt with that big opening win over, uh, who was it? Purdue, I think, Tim Foley. Is that right? <laughs> Tim's alma mater. Good ball game, that uh, Pitt and Purdue game. Robert Williams getting almost nothing on that one. He just got introduced to Terry Webster. Young linebacker for Georgia. Georgia has Webster and Guthrie in the game right now at linebacker and a couple young guys that are going to really come on. They've got the great ability. Mitchell and Boswell and Brantley, they just get most out of everything that they have, but they, they're not blessed with a tremendous amount of ability and talent. And, uh, Guthrie and Webster are guys that are going to make big names for themselves at Georgia. Carlson back into quarterback number 14 now in this two-quarterback system for Baylor. He hands off to number 26 McAdoo off the left side and he gets the first down to the 33 yard line. We're only 38 seconds away from halftime and we hope you'll stay with us during the halftime. We'll have the Georgia Redcoat Marching Band, one of the fine musical units, 320 members in that band. Of course, all the highlights and college football scores from this afternoon of college football around the nation with Craig Sager and Alec Hawkins and of course the highlights from the first half here between Georgia and Baylor tied at seven apiece. Clock running, 25, 24, 23. Remaining in the first half. You see it, lower left-hand corner. Carlson just gives it off to McAdoo. And he gets to the 36-yard line. And the clock continues running. And I doubt that either team will stop it at this point on the field. And that's going to probably be it for the first half of play. And we have a dead heat at 7-7 between Baylor and Georgia. We expected a close one. It has indeed been that. Beautiful afternoon for football. Hazy skies, 65 degrees, breeze about 10 to 15 miles out of the northeast. And a lot of red jerseys in the stands at Sanford Stadium in Athens, Georgia, tied at halftime, 7-7. Hi, I'm Craig Sager along with Alec Hawkins. The Georgia Bulldogs were leading Baylor 7 0. Suddenly, the ball game is tied at the half. We have a dandy. I'm telling you, the Georgia team characteristics of it is that they're a big play team, and you saw that. You know, all they do nothing, and all of a sudden, bam, everything explodes. Steve Boswell made that great hit that led to the touchdown by Baylor. Made the hit, recovered the fumble, but then he uh, threw the ball down, got a penalty for uh, 
bad conduct, it was taken out of the game. If you were the coach, what would you do? He kid makes a great play, but loses his temper. Oh, no. You, you can't put up with that. You saw it cost Georgia uh, in that uh, game with Alabama. Well, he's out of the game. It was a great play, nonetheless. Elsewhere, Maryland, who we said last week lost its uh, opener, lost to Penn State for the 21st consecutive time, taking on Boston College and trying to bounce back. Boston College with the ball, but a fumble, and Maryland recovers. A few plays later, quarterback Stan Galball to Tom Be tailback Tommy Neal, and Maryland out in front of Boston College, 10 to nothing, that game late in the second quarter. Two teams with high expectations this year, Arizona State and Michigan State. Well, neither one of them were up to par last year. Michigan State breaking even, I think, 6-6, six and six, and Arizona State not much better, 7-4, and four, I think. So. So they're opening the season right now up in East Lansing, Michigan. Spartans quarterback Dave Yorima goes left, pitches the ball to Lorenzo White. This is the first touchdown of the year for Michigan State. 42-yard play. The extra point was no good. It was 6 nothing. But Chris Caudill then kicked a 31-yard field goal. And Michigan State is on top of Arizona State. That is 9-0. That is in the second quarter. And we'll be back after this word on Turner Network Television. At the half, Georgia and Baylor are tied 7-all. Since Herschel Walker left Georgia, nobody has been able to fill his shoes. Now the school is making sure that nobody wears his jersey. Like a bull of lightning, Herschel Walker arrived at the University of Georgia in 1980. But like a clash of thunder, he left three seasons later, skipping his senior year to sign with the USFL. There are many who say Walker's the best to ever play the college game. He was an All-American for three straight seasons. He led the Bulldogs to a national championship, and he won a Heisman Trophy. Before the 1985 season opener, Georgia retired Walker's jersey. However, to some, the three stands for the years he gave Georgia, the four for the year he did not. But Walker insists he has no second thoughts. No, really, I think I did everything right because I think through that decision, through all the mistakes I've made, through all the accomplishments that I've done, through everything, the right thing, the wrong thing, I've learned a great deal as an individual, most of all as an athlete, and I think I can continue to learn, continue to do things the same way. When Walker left Georgia, he gave up his senior year in the football field, but he did not give up his senior year in the classroom. Walker is back at the Athens campus this fall, completing a degree in criminology. And who do you think was the greatest college football player of all time? I wouldn't want to be so bold as to talk about that thing. Herschel was certainly one of them. He, uh, his freshman year, I think he was the finest running back I've ever seen. His sophomore year is about the same thing. His junior year, he didn't play quite as well. He was more interested in that $6 million contract waiting for him with the generals. You had a great career as a collegiate star also. Another guy in our broadcast team, Paul Horning, may be the best of all team, too. He's bad. Paul should be in the Hall of Fame, no question about it. I won't rest until he is. Now he's in one of them. He does. He did it all. He kicked the ball, played defense, played offense, quarterback the losing team of the Heisman Trophy. And was better off the field than on. Another updated score we haven't told you about. Georgia Tech is leading North Carolina State 14-7. That is in the second quarter. Virginia Tech on top of Clemson, 7-0. That also in the second. Our game, Baylor, Georgia, tied at 7 all. We'll be back with the second half after this word from the two schools on Turner Network Television. Well, most of us thought this was going to be a close game between Southwest Conference uh, Baylor and Southeastern Conference Team Georgia. And it's 7-7 here at halftime. Georgia got on the board first of all uh, after uh, both teams exchanged punts several times. Georgia finally got the ball down deep in Baylor territory. Vince Dooley pulled out a play we've seen him pull out many times, and that's to get one of his speedy wide receivers into the act and end around to number four, Freddie Lane. And Freddie Lane takes it 33 yards into the end zone thanks to some great escort service. Pete Anderson out in front, Mac Burrows out in front, wipes out the opposition. Herman Archie down there to wall off Thomas Everett, and Freddie goes in. Wayne Johnson, Georgia's redshirt freshman quarterback, misses his receiver here, but he does not miss 27 Thomas Everett. And then look at the great interception on the tip by number 11, Ron Francis. Baylor was unable to do anything with this interception in terms of scoring, but a roughing the penalty call against Georgia. A great shot of it, John Subia, knocking Chubb into the punter. The judgment of the official was that the momentum 
shoves momentum, carried him into the kicker, so it's a penalty. And that's 21, Ralph Stockmer with the touchdown. And that's Grady, the Baylor Bear. We have a 7-7 tie here at halftime. And uh, one thing, Tim Foley, I'm interested. We thought that we might see James Jackson play some quarterback for Georgia. Wayne Johnson went all the way in the first half. I I'm a little bit surprised myself. I think there's two things into consideration here, though. One is that he had a sore shoulder last week against Alabama, had trouble throwing the football, and his ankle has been a problem for the last several weeks. So I'm sure that's probably what it is. Well, we have a real war in the trenches. A 7-7 tie at halftime between Baylor and Georgia. 77,000 red-clad Bulldog fans here. And, folks, frankly, it is a very quiet Sanford Stadium. Georgia needs to get some noise out of the crowd here if they're going to take advantage of the home field advantage. We'll be back for the second half in just a moment. This is Turner Network Television. And both teams back on the field ready to begin the second Stadium in Athens, Georgia. There's a look at the statistical story of the first half. Georgia outrushing Baylor. Baylor outpassing Georgia almost by the same margin there. And Baylor with possession of the ball four and a half minutes longer than Georgia. Only one turnover, and that's the interception by Ron Francis off the arm of uh, Wayne Johnson. So the Bulldogs and the Bears play to a 7-7 tie in the first half and Tim I still they're going to kick off to Baylor you just have to wonder if Vince Dooley is going to do anything at the quarterback situation Wayne Johnson played the first half will he try to get this man number 14 James Jackson in, in the second half I think he's going to see if they can establish any kind of pattern any kind of momentum uh, Baylor alternates their quarterbacks it's their system because of the quarterbacks he's got confidence in both of them Grant Paff does and in Dooley's alternate of the quarterbacks, it was more of a search to find the man who is going to be the starter. And I, I think he's got to be, he can't be displeased with Wayne Johnson's performance. It hasn't been glamorous, but what Georgia quarterback has ever been a glamorous performer? They, that really isn't his role. He's only two for six for 11 yards with one interception in the, half, in the first half is Wayne Johnson. Georgia's had 33 yards rushing from Lane for that touchdown, 29 from Henderson, 21 from McCluskey. Williams, McAdoo, and Sargent have 18, 15, and 12 yards running the ball for Baylor in the first half of play. Mickey was 6 out of 12 for 78 yards. Carlson 1 out of 6 for 11. Here's the kickoff. Into the end zone to Randy Rutledge, and he is held there by his return sidekick Derek McAdoo. They'll bring it out to the 20-yard line where Baylor will go on offense. First down 10 from their own 20 with a tie game from Sanford Stadium. Ready to begin the second half of play. The key to George's defensive performance so far has been the ability of the defensive line to create pressure with only a three-man rush. That allows that additional player to be placed in the secondary to help out those deep backs. 14, Cody Carlson starts the second half at quarterback for Baylor. Three wide receivers. Williams and McAdoo in the backfield. Carlson the throw. Complete to Leland Douglas at the 26-yard line. Tackled by number three, Gary Moss. Douglas with his second reception of the game. And Douglas is kind of an interesting story. Weighed 215 pounds this spring as a Baylor wide receiver. And that was more than he could effectively carry came back at 185 and Grant Taft asked him what made the difference and he said that uh, seeing Matt Clark's name as number one in the press guide is what got him excited and he, he came back a different player. Second down four, Baylor from the 26. Fumble, Georgia recovers at the 24-yard line. It was knocked out of there by Henry Williams, 90, and fallen on by 57, Kenny Sims. Really popped McAdoo. Watch this initial hit by 90 Henry Williams. Look at Brantley, 42, filling it. And there's Billy Mitchell fighting. Williams pulls it out, and Kenny Sims jumps on the ball. Great job by the Georgia defense, creating a golden opportunity for the Bulldogs on offense. Both teams have one turnover each now. The Georgia interception and the Baylor fumble. Johnson gives to Tron Jackson. The hole was open for a split second, but then closed very quickly. Jackson goes down at the 21. Robert Waters, number 44, with the tackle for Baylor. Number 44, Robert Waters. George has been down here this close before Bears. without scoring, missing on a 36-yard field goal attempt previously. 
second down, seven from the 21. Jackson and Henderson in the backfield. Trey Lane in motion in first season's direction. Here's Henderson to the 10, first down. Freshman from Cartersville, Georgia. Right at the 10. I'm sorry. Fine job by Pete Anderson and Wilbur Strozier comes down and Kim Stevens blocks out. Here he comes. Everett Thomas makes a great play getting Henderson on the ground. Jamison had kind of, excuse me, Barry had kind of fired up in there and Henderson was able to search his way around. Georgia has split two receivers to the top of your screen. In motion comes Hockaday. Hand off to Tim Worley. Worley. Three yard line. Worley is out of bounds. Pulled out by 77 Steve Grumbine, a seven yard carry. This time Alan Jamison very aggressive with his penetration. As you see, Trey Crouch. Jamison makes the hit. Worley, that strong, powerful runner, keeps his legs moving, carries the ball down to the two yard line. It is second down three. Double tight ends, power backfield for Georgia. Wayne Johnson on the option, hit in the backfield, tosses to Keith Henderson, he gets about a yard. They'll spot the ball at the one and a half yard line, Everett and Coleman combining on the tackle of freshman Keith Henderson. Nice. Here we go, third down and one. That's a nice. You see that graphic information, this Baylor defense stopped Wyoming 10, uh, 10 20 times inside their 10. They don't stop Georgia. Tim Worley, touchdown. Just power running. Good explosion by the Georgia offensive line. Worley puts his head down. He got leverage on Jamison. He was underneath him, and he just pushed Allen Jamison back into the end zone. Nice running by Tim Worley. Tim Worley's first collegiate touchdown from Lumberton, North Carolina. Chumley in for the point after. It is good, and the Georgia Bulldogs have taken a 14-7 lead over Baylor with 12.30 remaining in the second quarter, in the second, in the third quarter of the second half, from Sanford Stadium in Athens, Georgia. So the Georgia Bulldogs have taken a 14 to 7 lead over Baylor and Georgia head coach Vince Dooley continues his succession 22 years here the Dean of Southeastern Conference coaches there have been some other great coaches here how about Pop Warner a lot of youngsters are playing youth football under the name of the Pop Warner Youth Football League well he coached here 100 years ago in 85 and 86 and that 86 team of Georgia's was undefeated McAdoo from the four Nice stutter step move, and he drives with power to the 24-yard line. Good effort, tackled by 60 Terry Webster of Georgia. Here's the information on the Georgia scoring drive. After the fumble recovery, Georgia took it 24 yards in five plays, and then freshman Tim Worley scored his first collegiate touchdown. Sims with the fumble recovery. It was raked loose by Henry Williams out of the arms of Derek McAdoo. Right at this spot on the field, as a matter of fact. Nice run in there by Keith Henderson also. The freshman backfield for Georgia. First down, 10 Baylor trailing now 14-7. Clark and Pruitt, the wide receivers. Broderick Sargent in motion out of the backfield. Quick toss to Pruitt. To about the 27, 28-yard line goes the wing back, Glenn Pruitt from Waxahachie, Texas. Moss and Loy with the tackle for Georgia. Pruitt's a senior. I think Carlson's calling that play on the line of scrimmage. Motions to no backs left in the backfield, and he throws it to the side that, that has an unprotected cornerback. That time, Little was drifted out to the wide side of the field, and Moss was by himself back here into the sideline. Second down seven from the 27. This Baylor team was explosive last week, has not been so, so far today. Carlson, it's complete the ball on the backfield. He got to the 32-yard line and spun back. They're going to spot it probably at the 31. Tackled by 19, John Little. Little 
Little is the intellectual leader of this football team on the field. They had counted on Tony Flack as playing weak safety to make many of the adjustments, and of course he's out of there now. So that responsibility now is passed on to Miles Smith, but Little keeps their head together. He's a former high school quarterback, and he gets better every time he walks onto the field. And he's filling the shoes of Terry Hogue, and I don't think anybody, anyone could do it more admirably. Third down three, Baylor from the 31-yard line. Cody Carlson, 14, the quarterback now. And he doesn't like what he sees in the Bulldog defensive alignment on his third down and three and calls a timeout and go to the sideline to talk to Grant Tapp. We'll come back in just a moment. Baylor, third and three from their own 31, trailing 14 to seven. Baylor third down three from the 31 yard line. Cody Carlson has just thrown three straight pass completions. He's four out of nine for 26 yards. Let's see if he takes it to the air here. He does. Incomplete good coverage by Willis on Leland Douglas. Baylor unable to get anything going against this Georgia defensive unit. They've played well as a team. Every single member of this Georgia defensive team has contributed thus far this afternoon. And they've done an excellent job of man-to-man -man coverage underneath in, that, in those short areas, protecting the inside of the field and working with those receivers as they run those sideline patterns. There's John Little taking a punt from Buzzy Sawyer. Sawyer with a line drive. It's going to give Little an opportunity. Not enough speed to get outside, and down he goes at the 31-yard line. Back to tackle him is 34, Kobe Borns. And now we're going to our Football Saturday Studios in Atlanta. Thank you, Bob. Closing seconds of the first half. Boston College trying to get on the board against Maryland. Sean Halloran watched the catch, and it is 10-7, Maryland on top at the half. Back to Bob and Tim. Same score here, Georgia leading Baylor, 14-7. Georgia ball, first and 10 from the Bulldog, 31-yard line. Excuse me, that Maryland score was 10-7. Tron Jackson, big opening. Once again, Thomas Everett has made a big play with just one arm. He tripped up Tron Jackson. He saved a touchdown earlier, but Jackson got 18 yards on the carry. Watch Kim Stevens out in front. David McCluskey does a nice job of opening that hole up. Everett cuts back and just barely trips up Tron Jackson. Look at Vic Perry hustling downfield. There's a big 272-pounder down there hustling. Georgia first and 10 from the 49-yard line. Jackson gets about a yard that time. If Everett had not tripped up Tron Jackson, it was nothing but goal lines and headlines. He had green grass in front of him. Grant Daff, 14th year as head coach at Baylor. His first game coaching was right here at Sanford Stadium in 1972 against Georgia. Georgia won 24-14. Second down nine. Johnson rifles it into the 39-yard line for a first down completion to Herman R.T. There's that good arm we talk about. Haven't had a chance to see it much today. Fine timing on this throw. Slip back from the eye, just zings it right in there. Ron Francis in good shape, makes a move on the ball. Archie hauls it in. Nice coverage, good pass and catch. Johnson, three out of seven, 23 yards in this game. That was a 12-yard completion. First down, 10, Georgia at 38. Here comes Jackson, big hole again. Drive to the 33-yard line. Steve Brumbine with the tackle for Baylor. Georgia's offense starting to get on track here. Georgia also has a, an excess of running backs this year in Worley, Lars Tate, and Tron Jackson. Tron is the only one that's not alternating in there on a consistent basis. They like, they like him as a spot player. He's good hands and good slashing runner. Second down three, Georgia at the 32 of Baylor. That's Freddie Lane in motion. And off to the fullback, McCluskey, short of the first down, driven down hard at the 30. Initial hit by Alan Jamison, senior from Houston. And McCluskey, who's a junior from Rome, was really the workhorse in that tailback formation of Georgia. The fullback gets that quick openers, a lot of blocking duties for number 43. And you know what he does almost as well as he runs? That, that boy can tickle the ivory, that guy right there. At the piano player. That he is, and he's a great singer. Bring them to their knees. Third down one. 
Bulldogs at the 30 of Baylor. Jackson. First down for the 23. Seven yard gain by Jackson. Tackle made by 93, Eugene Hall. Another fine job by Kim Stevens. You see Trudowski, there's Strozier coming down. Now look at Stevens. Cut down the linebacker and bang, here comes the back. Sadowski working well. Vic Perry again, hustling over there. Georgia team pulling together. Jackson with 35 yards and five carries. First and 10 Georgia at the 22. Here comes Jackson, not this time. Number 54, Trey Crouch from McAllen, Texas with his second tackle of the afternoon for Baylor. Fourteen to seven, Georgia leading. Seven thirty-three to go in the third quarter from Sanford Stadium. Good brisk wind coming out of the northeast today. I'd say around ten to twenty miles an hour has been the estimate from the weather bureau. Temperatures in the upper sixties. Second down eleven. Wayne Johnson screened to Jackson. They read it well. Down goes Jackson. Hit by number forty-four Robert Waters, the weak side linebacker. Brings up a third down and substantial. Let's call it third down and 14 for Georgia. Good reaction to that ball in the air by Robert Waters. Ronnie Francis got a good, real good jam on Herman Archie on the outside. They were both coming. Receivers are four lane and 81 Archie. Running backs are 38 Worley and 43 McCluskey. Third and 14 from the 26. Plenty of time. Herman Archie was wide open in the end zone. Freddie Lane was turning it shorter down about the 10 yard line and Johnson couldn't find them. Did you see the secondary move to the defensive right? John Thomas coming over with Herman Archie might have been able to make a play on that ball. Had a chance to hit him in the corner. Johnson with not enough time to find him threw it away. And freshman Steve Crumley in for a field goal attempt. This will be a 42-yarder. He missed a 36-yarder earlier. And this one looks good. Georgia 17. Baylor 7 with 6.31 to go. So Georgia has now taken a 10-point lead, 17-7, on the 42-yard field goal by Steve Crumley out of Athens, Georgia. Freshman kicker replacing Kevin Butler. And Baylor just unable to get anything uncranked here offensively today. We go into the game telling you how explosive they are. They scored 38 points against Wyoming. Georgia defense has shut them down. Here's McAdoo. Drives to the 20-yard line. McAdoo's had some very tough kickoff return yardage. He was tackled by 60 Terry Webster. The double quarterback system for Baylor. How's it doing? What are they looking like? Well, let's take a look. Tom Mickey and Cody Carlson. Tom Mickey, number 10, who's coming into the game, is 6 out of 12 for 78. Carlson, 4 out of 10 for 26. So 10 for 22 for 94 yards. Grant uh, passes. Excuse me, I'm sorry. But Grant Pass says he really doesn't know who's in there at quarterback. He, he won't know those statistics until after the game. First and 10 from the 21-yard line, Tom Mickey. On the option, Georgia plays it well, and down goes 22, Robert Williams. May have lost half a yard. It's hard to run wide on this wide tackle six defense of Georgia. What they were trying to do there is take advantage of the fact that Georgia had, had moved some of its linebackers, got, gotten a little bit more width to try to prevent that quick passing. They thought maybe they could run that, that straight down the line option, but it certainly didn't work. As Georgia's secondary converged in great pursuit from the inside of that Georgia defense. Mickey going long, has a man there. It's incomplete, intended for number 13, John Simpson. Good defensive play by the Georgia secondary again. We said the secondary would be tested. They have been tested, and they have an A thus far this afternoon. We're going to make it an A minus on this play here because. Simpson has got it deep. And Mickey thro underthrows the ball a little bit. You see Michael Willis chasing, but, it, but he's beat. Well-thrown ball is a touchdown, but he gets his hand on the football, good recovery, and knocks it away. So we'll make it A minus. <laughs> a minus for a diving save of a touchdown pass. You're tough, Tim. 
<laughs> you shouldn't have to dive to make the save. <laughs> I don't want you teaching my class. Third down 10 from the 21. <laughs> uh, Mickey, first down. Out to the 33-yard line. And that tackle was made by Michael Willis. That's one we told the folks that they could look for, I think, Bob. The quarterback draw. Always a good call against the three-man rush with man-to-man -man coverage underneath. We're going to pause five seconds for station identification. Five thirty to go, third quarter, Georgia 17, Baylor 7, first down 10 Baylor from their own 33. They've been unable to compete. We're going to pause five seconds for station identification. Five thirty to go, third quarter, Georgia 17, Baylor 7, first down 10 Baylor from their own 33. They've been unable to cross the 50 yard line in a long time. Mickey on the option to Williams. A few over on the left side. They knock him out of bounds at about the 37-yard line. Michael Willis and Greg Waters. And Willis has thus far, Tim. I'm not just making the case over our over our um, discussion a minute ago. But Willis, the senior from Maryland, Texas, has played pretty well with that right cornerback spot today. Would you say both the corners have played well? Gary Moss and, and uh, Michael Willis. And Bill Lewis has called a good game. He's tried to take a little bit of the heat off him by giving him underneath linebacker help. Second down four, gain of six that time for Baylor out to the 39. Quick opener up the middle, not much. A couple of yards for Robert Williams, senior from Galveston, not much more than that. Williams has been the workhorse in the backfield today. That's his ninth carry for 26 yards. See Grant Taft, he's talking to Duke Christians upstairs, and he's talking to Cotton Davidson. Cotton played for the Baltimore Colts, played for the Dallas Texans and the Oakland Raiders, the quarterback from Baylor. He played with Don Shula and Carl Passett and Tom Keene, some of those Dolphin coaches. Third down to Baylor. On the option, Mickey, close to the first down. It will all depend on the spot. Miles Smith, number two with the stop. Georgia Miles Smith that free safety for Georgia was born in England grew up in Roswell Georgia went to Auburn transferred to Georgia was injured his first year at Auburn they may have to bring the, the sticks in here to measure that I won't attempt to guess until they bring in the sticks Georgia leads 17 7 this telecast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Southeastern Conference and Turner Broadcasting System any publication first down as you see rebroadcast retransmission or other use of the pictures descriptions or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the SEC and the Turner Broadcasting System incorporated is prohibited and next week hope you'll join yours truly Tim Foley our TBS sports crew with our TNT network telecast from Tallahassee Florida State defeating Nebraska Memphis State 1-0-1 they tied Ole Miss a week ago. Both teams are off this weekend getting ready for that one. We expect a very good ball game down at Tallahassee. On a first down, Mickey. Incomplete. Looking for Darnell Chase out on the left side. That's the first appearance of the game by Darnell Chase. He's a 5'7 freshman. World-class speed out there. Excellent job of disguise. You see Mickey talking to Chase. Chase thought that cornerback was going to back off and Willis had him fooled. He started coming up there. Chase began to run a fade and he and Mickey missed connection. Chase going out of the game now. That's so important for a defense to not line up in the coverage. To make the quarterback guess. Don't let him know what you're in until the ball is snapped. Snap and make him think on the run. Second down 10 from the 43 Baylor. Mickey in the pocket. It is complete to Matt Clark. Deep inside Georgia territory to the 36-yard line. Michael Willis with the tackle. Good arm by Mickey. He rifled that one. A nice play. See, Brantley's got to get a little bit more depth. You see him settle too soon. He started to move back to the right. But Matt Clark, a high school quarterback and just a tremendous utility player. He's a, a backup. You see Derek McAdoo come in and take a shot. To back up quarterback, he holds for extra points. First and 10 from the 37. That was a 19-yard completion. Attempting to run wide. Here's Williams outrunning the coverage. Gets back to only about a three-yard loss. He was way back there. Moss and Mitchell gets him down. Running for his life, Robert Williams. There's Dale Strong. 
linebacker coach for Georgia, talking to Billy Lewis. Bill Lewis in the black shirt. Now he's sending in the call. That doesn't mean punch him in the mouth, either. That's the defensive call. Second down, 14 from the 41. Single setback is Williams. Now he's gone from the backfield. Who they come about? Mickey is swallowed up in a sea of red jerseys at the 48. Henry Williams, number 90, led the way right up the middle, but there were a host of red jerseys. A tenacious, blitzing band of red jerseys. Harry Harris working on the arm over. Look at Williams come underneath. There was a missed assignment in the offensive line there. Someone turned out when they should have blocked Williams. Third and 20 now, back to the 47-yard line. Grant Taft brought two Southwest Conference championships to, since he's been there. Good protection this time, but not enough time. Nothing opened up for Tom Mickey. Waters, who had been cut down by the block, got up and then got Mickey. Good play by Greg Buddy Waters, the senior from Swainsboro, Georgia, and they love the defense at Sanford Stadium. Muddy Waters makes the sack. Good hustle by Muddy, but great coverage by the Georgia secondary. Buzzy Sawyer, I think uh, one of the Georgia players got a hand on that fair catch by John Little at the 21-yard line. The Georgia defense really stood the task there as after that 19-yard pass completion got them to the 36-yard line. This is Turner, Network Television. So the Georgia defense held their ground, and now the offense has their turn with a 17-7 lead. 1.33 to go, third quarter. Georgia leading. Blaylock's in the game, Bob. This might be a time for a play pass. Here's Tim Worley with a big opening. He gets a first down, about 11 or 12 yards. Robert Waters, 44, with the stop for Baylor. Grant Tapp, five-time Southwest Conference Coach of the Year. Concerned about... His offense's inability to move the football. Georgia starting to rack up some yards rushing the ball. 182 yards on the ground for Georgia through just a little less than three quarters. Only 20 yards passing, passing for the Dooley Bulldogs. And that's not news to most people who followed Vince Dooley. Here's Tim Worley hitting the backfield. 57 came in to make the play. That's Ray Berry. Miami leading Rice 14 to 3 in the second quarter. It's being played in Texas. Michigan State at half out in front of Arizona State, 9 to nothing. Virginia Tech at halftime leading Clemson. They announced that score here in Georgia. Everybody cheered. Clemson and, of course, Georgia, longtime rivals. Virginia Tech was defeated last week by Richmond, the University of Richmond. The head coach there is a fellow named Dal Sheely, who is the offensive coordinator of Baylor when they went to the Cotton Bowl back in 74. And his son, coaching on the staff. I believe it was illegal use of hands. You couldn't hear what the referee Frank Shepard said there. He didn't get his mic on in time, but it was illegal use of hands against the offense. Five, five yard penalty. Here's Henderson. He goes down at 33. Alan Jamison, number 47, with his sixth tackle of the afternoon out of the middle linebacker spot for Baylor. That's a little bit different look from Georgia. Worley going in motion and becoming the lead blocker for the fullback Henderson. They both came in here as highly recruited freshmen. Uh, had a lot of competition early on, but they've become uh, best friends. I believe they're rooming together and lining up in the same backfield. Well, Keith Henderson has 46 yards running the ball this afternoon. Nine carries. This is second down 11 from the 33. Johnson. It's picked off. Excellent play by 57 Ray Berry, who just cut in front of 87 Troy Sadowski. And another turnover. And now the Baylor Bears have an excellent opportunity at the Georgia 34-yard line. There is Ray Berry. Grant Taft says he's the second best linebacker he's ever coached. Excellent play by Ray Berry. It was almost as he knew the play was coming. You know, how many linebackers would sit back on that weak side, have the patience to do it? He did it and made the big play. 
He was out of the vision of Wayne Johnson. And as he intercepted the ball, the clock ran out on the third quarter. Georgia leading 17 to 7, but Baylor threatening after the Ray Berry interception. Fifteen more minutes of football from Sanford Stadium. Georgia 17, Baylor 7. Bears ball, first and ten at the Bulldog, 34. Tom Mickey. Has a man wide open. It's complete at the 11. And out of bounds goes Broderick Sargent. The right halfback, he was covered by Gary Moss. A 20-yard pass completion, and Baylor is knocking at the door at the 9. Inside the 10-yard line. The Baylor offense has to take advantage of this big play by the defense. And it's a nice throw by Mickey. A little confusion in the Georgia secondary on that play. Clark and Ates are the receiver. Sergeant and Ball the backs. Mickey under pressure. It's picked up by Miles Smith at the goal line. And he gets back to the five. Tremendous interception by the sophomore free safety. It was intended for Horace Ates. Great play here by the transfer. You see Brantley running up the middle. Smith comes underneath, makes a beautiful play on the ball, takes it away from Eights. Big play, Georgia defense. Mickey not able to step up into the throw because of that pressure by the Georgia front. Can't get enough on the ball to get it to Eights. Threw a little bit behind his receiver, giving Miles Smith that opportunity. Now both teams even at two turnovers apiece. Georgia running conservatively down there inside the 10-yard line. McCluskey just, just a couple of yards out to about the 7 or 8-yard line. So it remains Georgia 17, Baylor 7. Baylor's not going to get much better opportunity than that. For some reason, Bob, I just get the feeling that it's been a very unemotional game. I don't know if it's just because the fans haven't been into the football game or what. They just feel like they're going through the paces out there. Very quiet stadium here at San Plusky, not much. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. It's going to bring up third down at about six. We're going to our Football Saturday Studios in Atlanta. The stadium is not quiet in Ann Arbor. Notre Dame with the ball inside the 10-yard line, but they have to settle for a field goal attempt by John Carney. It's good from 34 yards out. Notre Dame has silenced the crowd a bit to score 3-0. takes an early lead in the game with Michigan. That's at Ann Arbor. Third down, five, Georgia. They lead 17-7 here over Baylor from the 10. McCluskey short of the first down. Ray Berry, number 57. I keep saying that Grant Taft says Ray Berry is the second best linebacker he ever coached. The first one is Mike Singletary, now playing with the Chicago Bears. Watch 57. 230-pound helmet cracker. Does a great job of staying behind the flow of that play, waiting for the cutback, trying to strip the ball out. The running back's grasp, Ray Berry. And now Chris Carpenter in for Georgia for his fifth punt of the afternoon. Baylor's lined up 10 minutes at the line of scrimmage. Let's see if they go after this one. Everett is back at the 45 to take it. Carpenter just really nails it. Thomas Everett from his 30. Good coverage by Georgia. Everett struggles back to the 32-yard line. Excellent punt. 56 yards and only a two-yard return, and now a penalty marker is down at about the 27. This is Turner Network Television. In 19 play. So it was a 15-yard penalty for Clipping. Look in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. Thomas Everett trying to get, turn the corner, but uh, looked like Guthrie was split there, blocked in the back, and cost him 15 yards. Back to the 13-yard line. And the Baylor Bears trail 17-7, 12-41 remaining in this ball game. Number 14, Cody Carlson back in at quarterback now for the Baylor Bears remind you that this coming summer Turner Broadcasting System will be broadcasting the Goodwill Games, the first ever Goodwill Games from Moscow and the Soviet Union, the first world-class international competition between 
USSR and American athletes since 1976. Of course, many other nations will be participating in those games in Moscow this summer. Hope you'll join us for those. First and 10 from the 14. Carlson under pressure, completes it to McAdoo. Flags go down. McAdoo to the 24-yard line. I think it's going to be illegal receiver downfield. Andy Loy, number 39, with the stop for Georgia. It's going to go against Baylor. Again, one of the things that Bill Lewis talked about before the football game, Wyoming quarterback. They got no pressure on the quarterback, as if to say, it's going to be different on Saturday. We're going to go after him a little bit. And they've been in the face of Cody Carlson and Tom Mickey all afternoon. Now they move ball to the eight-yard line. Illegal block is the call. Blocking below the waist, away from that line of scrimmage area where it is allowed. 12-27 remaining in this game. Georgia 17, Baylor 7. First down 23, Baylor. From their 8 now. Make that first down 17, Baylor. From the 8-yard line. Out of his end zone, Carlson has a man there. It is complete. To number 23, Horace Eights for the first down. And Eights goes out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Very big pass completion. Cody Carlson to senior Horace Eights. Just an excellent job of throwing the ball with touch here by Co Cody Carlson. And very frustrating for a secondary coach. Get, linebackers have got to get more depth in those situations. You know they're going to throw the ball. Get back out there. Don't put yourself in a situation where you got to hustle to get to an area where you should be before the you have to make a decision. From the 31-yard line, first down, 10 Baylor. Three wide receivers with the split back gear offense. Carlson. Shovel oh. pass is picked out of the air by number 90, Henry Williams, and he goes down at the 18. Carlson says, whoa, you weren't supposed to be there. I can't wait to see this one myself. Bob, I was watching the coverage. Oh. Looked like he tried to go to the shovel and pull it back. The ball slipped out of his hands, and Henry Williams makes the reception and rambles down. Look, he sees it's not there. He tries to pull it back, and the ball slips out. Now he tries to wrestle Henry Williams to the turf. On the first down, 10. Not much, maybe a yard by Henderson down to about the 15-yard line. Remember the name. Henry Williams. He will probably be an All-American if things continue the way they are. He's only a sophomore. Had an excellent game against Alabama. Today he's had a quarterback sack. He's had this interception and he's made penetration often during the afternoon. 6'4", 235. Real storybook too. Grew up in the shadow of Sanford Stadium here two miles away. Second down Georgia from the 15. Worley to about the 13. It'll be third down and about five now for the Bulldogs. So now three turnovers for Baylor, two for Georgia. Baylor has not been able to capitalize on their turnovers, Bob. One was a long pass. It was almost a punt. And on the other turnover, Georgia intercepted right back on it. Third down four from the 12. Hockaday in motion. Here's Worley. Does not get the first down unless he struggled forward. Let's see where they spot it. He got a little extra effort right at the last. I think he came up short. They want Vince Dooley to go for it. He is short by about a foot. At the nine-yard line. The Bulldogs are going to go for it. Here comes Wycliffe Lovelace into the game. Another tight end. Hockaday and Archie coming out. A big play here for Baylor. Now the crowd getting a little emotional for Vince Dooley's Bulldogs, leading 17-7. Ten minutes remaining in the game. Worley. To the eight-yard line. First down.
Stevens, Strozier, Sadowski have been doing an excellent job all afternoon giving this man some room. And he hammers it up there and picks up the first down. Good job of running by Tim Worley. First and goal from the seven where they mark the ball. Power backfield for Georgia. Worley again. Gets about a yard, no more this time. Young Tim Worley getting a whole lot more carries than he got in that Alabama game. Yeah, I wonder if we're starting to see the development of the backfield here of Worley and Henderson of Georgia. I don't mean immediately. Down the road, there may be some names. We say this is a no-name Georgia team. We may be seeing some names develop here, Tim Fulton. No question about it. I mean, Tim Worley's got size, and, and he's ran the, run, won the 100 meters in the Junior Olympics. So that shows he's got pretty much speed, too, I think. Second down, goal from the six. Now it's McCluskey and Worley. Here comes Worley again. Fumbles into the end zone. They're going to call it a touchback. It will be Baylor ball. They're calling it a touchback. It was fallen on by Baylor, and I believe it's linebacker Ray Berry, 57, who got the ball. So the youngster, Tim Worley, after hammering it in there time after fi time, finally dropped the ball. Baylor dodges a bullet, continues to trail 17-7. So Tim Worley gains five and then loses it. Tim, see what happens here. Waters gives him a shot, and Everett combines with Waters to knock the ball out. And who is that? Wycliffe Lovelace looked like he was there and had possession of the ball, but it must have popped out. And a pass reception by Clem Pruitt gets it out here on first down for another first down. They bring the ball out just past the 30-yard line. So there's Tim Worley. He's having himself a good game. He had eight carries for about 45, near 50 yards before he fumbled the ball. He fumbled once against Alabama. You'll see some youngsters doing that. They're just not used to the hits that they take from this major league competition when they come out of high school so many times. Excellent reception by Matt Clark. Eight-yard gain out here to the 39-yard line in traffic. Michael Willis covering. The comparison that Cotton Davidson used in talking about Mer excuse me, Matt Clark was Howard Twilley. The great possession receiver, tremendous field sense. As we said, a high school quarterback that played quarterback last year and won his starting job as a wide receiver. Second down two. Darnell Chase, number five, is a speed merchant in the ball game. Let's see if they go deep on this second and short yardage. Look for number five. Cody Carlson. <laughs> Good call, Bob. <laughs> Hands off to Broderick Sargent. Out of the backfield. Trying to trying to be make a brilliant guess there, Tim. I should leave that to you. No, 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 no. <laughs> That, that would have made sense, I appreciate sense, though, you right. being wrong once in a while. You can, you can cover me on that. That would have been a good play, wouldn't it? That would, you know, I say it probably would have been a touchdown. <laughs> One nice thing about getting uh, Chase in a game like that is it becomes less conspicuous. The first couple of times you see him coming in, that's exactly what you're thinking. Uh, after the third or fourth time, you may tend to forget it. Chase is back out of the game now. So Carlson throws. Way to go. First and ten. And it's complete. And it's from Rick Sargent. If he can outrun one man, Moss, he'll make it, but he doesn't. Gary Moss is there to make the stop at the 20. So he hits his back, Broderick Sargent, out of the backfield. Well, that time, they, you see him blitzing Brantley coming in there, Boswell going over to cover. He's a little late getting underway. Sargent does an excellent job of keeping his feet. And then, who is that? Baker got a good block. It sprung him. Willis coming along, dragging him down to the turf with Gary Moss. Touchdown saving tackle by those two rascals. The 19 of Georgia, first down 10. It's 17-7, Georgia. Eight minutes to go in the ballgame. That whirly fumble looking big now. Carlson incomplete, almost picked off again by Miles Smith. He intercepted one at the goal line earlier, intended for Leland Douglas, and it goes incomplete. Once again, some man-to-man -man coverage underneath. This time it's by Willis. Miles Smith helping out back there, giving him some deep help. Reacted well on the ball. So it's second down, 10 Baylor. Baylor's been down here before, but not able to drive it into the goal line over this Bulldog defense. At the 19. Receivers are Leland Douglas and Horace Eights to the left side. Ball and McAdoo in the backfield. Carlson. The blitz is on. Carlson. Oh, 
almost picked off and dropped by Michael Willis down here at the 11 yard line. He was looking for Leland Douglas again. Carlson made some unwise throws in this ball game. Muddy Waters coming from the outside. Excellent job of coverage by Willis. He backs off the line, so he's not in a position where he has to overreact. He's got good vision on the quarterback. Kind of confused the receiver, I think, and disturbed the timing. Carlson threw a dangerous ball. It could have gone the other way for a touchdown. Carlson, 8 out of 17 passing. Big play for Baylor, third and 10 from the Georgia 19. Threw it in motion. Screen past the ball. Ball to the 10-yard line. He needed to get inside the 10 for the first down, so he will be short. Here's a decision for Baylor. Remember, they trail by 10. you got to figure they'll go for the field goal here, but let's wait and see. No, nope. they're going to go to the sideline and talk it over. Another nice job of coverage by the Georgia secondary underneath. The ball is thrown short. That's where you want it to go. Now converge on the football. Billy Mitchell chasing him down from the back. So Tom Mickey comes in at quarterback. And on fourth down and two, Baylor is going to load up with their power veer backfield and go for it. Great tackle. Rockamer is nailed by 56. Jump yard dog, Bill Mitchell. Tim, it looked like the, the play was there, and then all of a sudden, here comes number 56. Well, the hole opens here. You'll see it open up. And Mitchell steps up into it. Stockmer trying to drift it to the outside. Probably should have dipped his shoulder and taken it up the field and tried to bowl over Billy Mitchell. But Billy Mitchell, teeth out and all, makes the stop. First and 10 for the 11 Bulldogs. John Jackson down to the 14-yard line. John Jackson tackled by Ray Berry. The Ray Berry just made his eighth tackle. That man has had himself an excellent football game today. One interception, eight tackles been in on several more 640 to go in the game and the Bulldogs are looking good if they can get a first down here if not plenty of time for Baylor double tight ends for the Bulldogs on second down seven Tron Jackson sweeping here comes that man Thomas Everett number 27 what a player Thomas Everett all over the field they free him up to literally be a free safety, and he combines with Ray Berry, and those are a couple of great defenders there. You'll probably hear about them in professional football. Yeah, he's only, they say he's 5'9". I'm not sure he's 5'9", but he sure plays like a much bigger man. Covers a lot of ground. You saw him almost make an interception outside the numbers from a free safety position. That time, makes a tackle over on the sideline, filling from his free safety position. Third down, six, Georgia. 5.45 to go in the game. Bulldogs with a 10-point lead. Wayne Johnson fakes the option, goes long. Double coverage, incomplete, looking for Herman Archie. Good coverage by Thomas Everett and Ron Francis. And there's Bill Mitchell, Georgia linebacker, who made the big play on the fourth down and two for Baylor. But Georgia can't get the first down. The Baylor Bears are going to get another opportunity with plenty of time. 5.39 remaining in this game. Baylor has two timeouts remaining. They used one earlier in this half. Billy Mitchell turned around and smile. You can see he donated uh, two teeth to the Georgia turf in practice a few years ago. Just looks mean That's the inside that face mask. Chris Carpenter will punt from his end zone again. He's done a good job for Georgia today, the freshman punter. This one not as good as he'd like to have. They're going to let it bounce. And it goes out of bounds. It's touched down at the 48-yard line by Calvin Ruff. And it'll be Baylor ball with excellent field position and five and a half minutes remaining. It's Georgia 17, Baylor 7. This is Turner Network Television. Super football Saturday night at 8 Eastern on the Super Station tonight. Tim, we talked about at the beginning of the game this Baylor football team being explosive. We have yet to hear the explosion. Well, I think you can credit that to Georgia's defense. They've good, done a good job confusing the Baylor quarterbacks. Cody Carlson complete to Derek McAdoo. And out of bounds he goes at the 44-yard line. Short of the first down. I might, by the way, Tim, as we look at McAdoo running back into the huddle, 
a freshman running back, number 37, Charles Perry, uh, entered the game for Baylor. Charles Perry is a 5'10 freshman from Bryan, Texas, that Grant Tapp likes a whole lot. So let's see if uh, see what that youngster does. So several of his coaches wanted to redshirt Charles Perry, but uh, Grant thinks he's going to be the type of player that can get in there and make a contribution this year. And as they go down the stretch, they've got some awfully tough games on the road. They play six bowl teams from last year on the road, and they he feels they're going to need his contribution. Tom Mickey calls timeout. Now Baylor has only one timeout remaining. It is second down three at the 40, just inside the 45-yard line of Georgia as Mickey goes over to talk to Grant Tapp. So Baylor running dangerously short of timeouts, and Georgia has been running, I don't know, probably 25 players or so in and out of that defensive unit this afternoon. And very unusual alignments in there. We saw players we frankly didn't expect to play play quite a bit today. But the men that needed to play well have played well. They've gotten leadership from Mitchell and Boswell and Brantley. Waters effectively has rushed the passer. And you can't say enough about the up front folks. Kenny Sims and Henry Harris, Henry Williams, just doing a fine, fine job. Mickey concludes his conversation with Grant Tapp on the sideline and comes back into the ball game. The senior from Angleton, Texas, decided that now was the time to take a break because Baylor's had the opportunity to score on several occasions in this half, been unable to convert. Leland Douglas and number 25, Glenn Pruitt, are split wide to the right side. Second down, four. Blitz by Georgia. It is complete for the first down to Matt Clark at the 36-yard line. Michael Willis with the coverage. That was a play that was called on the line of scrimmage. Someone else we should mention, Bob, is the fellow that we saw carrying the ball last year for Georgia, Tony Mangrum. He's been employed as the fifth defensive back, and he's just a superb athlete, and I think Dooley felt like he, he needed his leadership over on defense as much as his skill, and he's done an excellent job today also. Matt Clark has four catches for Baylor, first and 10 at the 37. Left side pass, McAdoo out of bounds, gain of just a yard or so. Let's see where they spot him out of bounds. They say he got further upfield. They thought he went out of bounds on the near side. They're going to give him three or four yards to the 31-yard line. John Little with the tackle. Georgia Tech hammering North Carolina State at Raleigh, 28 to 7 in an ACC battle. That's in the fourth quarter. Miami just barely leading Rice in the second quarter down there in Texas. Houston, 14 to 10. LSU and North Carolina knotted up 13-13 at halftime. Kentucky leading Bowling Green, 10-7 in the second quarter. It's complete to Leland Douglas for the first down at the 25-yard line. The clock ticks down to 5.01 and counting. Baylor trailing 17-7 here at Sanford Stadium. We're in the fourth quarter. The type of defense that George is playing, that man-to-man -man underneath backed up by a zone, the trail technique employed by the defender is to sit on the inside hip, prevent the receiver from crossing the field. And as a result, now Baylor is throwing the ball more to the sideline but it's a tough throw. First and 10 at the 25-yard line of Georgia. Big series for the Baylor Bears, and number 52, Henry Harris, jumped across the line there. He made contact with center John Attix. They say he moved the ball. Once they're set, the center can move the ball all they want until everybody's set, and then, of course, he can't move it again. They spot it at the 30. These penalties have hurt Baylor in several situations this afternoon. They've had four penalties for losses of 32 yards, but it's, it's the critical timing of the penalties that's hurt them worse. There are Mickey's stats. One interception today, no touchdown. McAdoo lines up wrong. That clock is ticking down to 10, 9, the 25-second clock. He gets the play underway. Mickey. Great catch by Clark at the seven-yard line. Matt Clark with his fifth catch of the afternoon. Coverage by Moss of Georgia. The Baylor Bears are coming back, trailing 17-7. Now this takes some courage to go for this ball. He sweeps upfield. Andy Loy is chasing. You can see him there. The deep back should have been there a little bit earlier, but Clark goes up after the football, knows he's going to be punished on the way down, and hangs on, maintains possession. 
Baylor. First down and goal at the Georgia 7. Four minutes to go in the game. Eight's in motion. Under pressure, Mickey. Diving. Pass catch attempt is incomplete. That was Horace Eights diving for the ball. Moss covering, but Mickey was under considerable pressure. Looks to the strong side. Everybody covered. Now he starts to scramble. The idea is work back toward the quarterback. Work back toward him, toward him work toward the sidelines. Gary Moss is an interesting story, too. He was here for a couple of years, had academic problems, and uh, was dismissed. Went to school someplace else for a while, got his grades back in order, and now he's back with a new attitude and understanding that the classroom is important. Second down goal from the seven. Baylor trailing 17-7. Pressure on Mickey, running for his life. Down he goes, throwing on the run. They're going to call it tackle grounding. There were no receivers near there. It was 42 Brantley who was near it. There are two penalty markers down. Maybe for the same infraction. I would assume so. There's the intentional grounding call. That's a loss of down. That'll be a big one. That'll bring up third down. The quarterbacks have had just no time. Brantley rushes right, right through the line. Williams chasing. Mickey has nowhere to go with the ball. It's John, John Rambo Brantley was chasing him down. From the spot of the foul also, so it moves it all the way back to the 25-yard line. Third and 25. Third and goal from the 25. 3.47 remaining in the game. Now here's a situation where the Georgia defense, the linebackers, the second level of defense ought to back up. Mickey, under pressure. Pruitt, touchdown Baylor. Heavy pressure on Carlson, triple coverage on Glenn Pruitt, and Baylor scores. It is 17-13. Unbelievable, Bob. Watch this now. They're running man-to-man -man underneath. The three deep should be lined up back on the 10-yard line. You know you have to go with something like this. They're going to have to go for it on fourth down if they don't get the completion here. And Willis has to try to make a great diving save. You just put yourself in a bad spot. Big point after coming here from freshman Terry Seiler. It's good. And with 3.40 to go, we have a three-point ball game. Georgia 17, Baylor 14 on a third and 25. Watch number 25 here, Glenn Pruitt. He played behind Bruce Davis for two years. Bruce is now with the Cleveland Browns, of course. Watch his concentration on the football. But Willis tips the ball, Pruitt pulls it down. But Willis should have never been in that situation. He should have been playing that much, much deeper. Well, number two, Miles Smith, the free safety was just running so hard to try to get over there and help out and couldn't get there in time. Well, we've got ourselves a ball game with only 340 left. Baylor has only one timeout remaining. Georgia all three. Georgia, of course, doesn't want to use any of them. They just want this clock to make three minutes and 40 seconds worth of ticks. See, that's just inexperience. That's how that's going to hurt you. And you have to consider the down and distance as a football player every time you line up. And when it's third and 23, <laughs> back up. Well, that's secondary. The problems back there, the inexperience, cost Georgia in the Alabama game. And that drive at the end of the game against Alabama, Georgia had the lead. Alabama 16-13. Alabama came back and won the game 20-16. Good kickoff. Little five, excuse me, check that. I was going to say five foot six inch Terry Seiler kicked it into the end zone, but <laughs> Jim Mueller, the kickoff kicker, kicks it into the end zone. He's 200 pounds. And Georgia brings it out to the 20 yard line with three minutes, 40 seconds. No time expired on that kickoff into the end zone. So the Bulldogs are going to have to get themselves a first down here. There's the scoring drive for Baylor. Third down, 25, and Mickey with a nice toss under pressure to Glenn Pruitt. And it's wide open. Freddie Lane. All the way to the 45-yard line of Baylor. Coleman with the tackle. They call Vince Dooley.
conservative. Well, you got to, I think you probably have to credit George Hafner for this call, the offensive coordinator for Georgia. I was thinking about this, but I thought, nope, they're not going to do it down here in this particular situation. But here they go, and it certainly did work well. Coach Dooley said, you want to run a what? First down 10 from the 46-yard line. Johnson pitches to Tron Jackson. Jackson to the 36-yard line. Tron Jackson, a scat back type of tailback who's running harder and harder and more intelligently. What was it Coach Dooley said when he was a freshman? He used to try to run over defensive tackles. That's right. And he didn't really use his elusiveness. He tried to be like Herschel Walker. Now he tries to run over cornerbacks. Better Here, choice. There comes Stanley Blaylock into the game for Georgia. Herman Archie comes out. Blaylock, a speedster from Atlanta. This is second down and less than a yard for Georgia. Blaylock splits way out to the left side. We've seen him go deep several times. They just hand off to McCluskey. 29, first down Georgia. Allen Jamison with the tackle for Baylor. This is exactly what Georgia had to do. Georgia had to consume time on the clock, maintain possession, and sustain a drive. Last time they had it at their 20, they couldn't do it. This time, thanks to the reverse to Freddie Lane, Georgia has it now at the 29-yard line of Baylor, leading 17-14, 2-19 to go in the game. Archie back in, play lockout. A couple discouraging for Grant Path. They fight their way back into the football game, and now he watches defense, who was number one in the Southwest Conference against the Rush last year, getting the ball moved on them. Tron Jackson to the 25-yard line. Have to go to the 19 for a first down. Clock down to 154. Well, following the Alabama game, which Georgia lost in the last minute of play, everyone said, is it that Georgia's bad, I'm talking about Georgia fans, or is Alabama really good? We said we'd find out more about Georgia today. Well, folks, this is a good Baylor Bears football team, and Georgia's leading by three late in the game. I think you're going to have to proclaim Georgia good. Maybe not great, but good. I think so. I did not think they'd be able to uh, handle Baylor like this on the ground. Second down, six, Georgia. McCluskey hit in the backfield, gets back to the line of scrimmage. Clock down to 118, 117. Baylor with only one timeout left, trailing 17-14. Now this will be a big third down play here. Clock at minute nine and counting. Baylor's going to have to use a timeout, and they do use their timeout. With 1.08 remaining in the game, clock stops. Clock would stop on a change of possession, of course, and then Baylor would have to go into a real hurry-up offense for a chance for a field goal. They're trailing 17-14 with 1.08 to go in the game. about to go to a one and one record unless they can make something happen it's third down six georgia at the baylor 25 108 to go in the game and georgia leads by three georgia has rushed 48 times for 264 yards today mccluskey does not get the first down clock keeps counting though georgia will have to turn the ball over to baylor they are going to have an opportunity but not much of one Georgia can let 25 seconds tick off the clock. They can attempt a field goal here, which would certainly be an opportunity at the 23. That would be a 40-yard field goal if Georgia wants to. Or they can just run the ball and try to go for the first down. They're going to run the ball and go for the first down. I don't think he wants to risk going for a field goal. I don't think he feels that great about his field goal kicker. Of course, you couldn't punt. It wouldn't do you any good. Eat up some time. Here's McCluskey who gets the first down. The party's over. The Sanford Stadium losing streak has apparently come to an end at the 15-yard line of Baylor with 24 seconds to go in the game. Georgia has only to fall on the ball. Clock is ticking now. They've reset the clock. Georgia doesn't even have to snap it. And the Georgia Bulldogs have ended their two-game Sanford Stadium losing streak over a tenacious Baylor Bears team, 17-14. to 14. 
Kim Stevens and Wilbur Strozier all afternoon long have done a great job. When they had to get the yards, they ran to the right, and they opened up the space for them. So Vince Dooley's Bulldogs go to one and one, and Grant Taft's Bears also go to one and one, and they're two of the finest college coaches you're going to see in just a moment. As Vince Dooley says congratulations to both of the Baylor quarterbacks, Grant Taft and Vince Dooley in the middle of the field here at Sanford Stadium, and the Bulldogs have beaten Baylor by a score of 17 to 14. This is Turner Network Television. Back to Bob and Tim. So the Georgia Bulldogs have defeated Baylor by a score of 17 to 14 at Sanford Stadium here in Athens, Georgia. The Georgia Bulldogs surprised us a little bit, Tim Foley, by going all the way with Wayne Johnson at quarterback. And the, I would say the key to Georgia's offense had to be that offensive line and, and some good solid running. And But I would credit, and I, I don't know if you agree or not, I would credit the the defensive football team of Georgia was coming up with a real big play. I don't think there's any question about that. The defense on the whole played well against Alabama. They were three and out, all but on three drives. Each one of those drives, Alabama scored. But they were without Tony Flack, who is really their kind of bell cow on defense, the, the person that they had confidence in making the calls and making the adjustments back there. And so I know Bill Lewis was very, very concerned about this particular game, but his guys came up with a super, super effort because Baylor is a powerful offense. They've got some explosive weapons, and Georgia kept them intact right up until the end. Uh, someone said Baylor looked a little sloppy today, and I said, we've seen Georgia so many times. They've made a lot of offensive teams look sloppy with that constant pressure on defense. They got a little bit more pressure than I thought that they would get, but you can't say enough about uh, Henry Williams and uh, Henry Harris and Kenny Sims. They all just did an excellent job of rushing the pass the quarterback and Mickey Carlson under pressure all afternoon never really had time to set up couldn't get any zip behind the ball and you have to say that the Georgia secondary every game they play they get a little bit more of that very valuable experience so even though they made some mistakes today which you pointed out in terms of their depth of coverage and in some other areas uh, they continue to gain some experience and in about two or three more games Tony Flack will be back in there, and that might not continue to be the weak spot that Georgia thinks it is now. Well, I was impressed with the way Miles Smith played. The free safety reacted well to the football, and, and throughout the game, the whole, all the members of the secondary played well. It's just a few little things that's not easy to, that's not easy to, it's not difficult, excuse me, to correct. It's just a matter of lining up a little bit deeper, just using your head, thinking a little bit out there on the football field. But uh, the Georgia defensive coaches did an excellent job. Uh, they were flashy enough on offense when they had to be. Came up with that reverse. They might have got half their total yards on reverses. I'm not sure. But they called it at, at uh, opportune times, and it worked well for them. Freddie Lane had 68 yards on two carries today, both of them reverses. Of course, one of them a 33-yard touchdown, and the other one a, uh, a substantial gain that kept... Georgia in possession of the ball after Baylor had driven down and on a third down and 25 gotten a touchdown reception from Glenn Pruitt. So Baylor pulled to within three, but then Georgia put on the drive that really closed the door and got the victory here. And, and the Georgia Bulldogs will probably get some of these win-hungry fans off their back. You know, Georgia, the national champions in 1980, the Bulldog folks over here expect to win every time that the Georgia Bulldogs play between the hedges. Georgia came into this game 29 and 3 in their last 32 games at Sanford Stadium having lost their last two but now they go to 30 and 3 and I'd have to say that alums and boosters and students and fans would have to be happy with a 30 and 3 record at Sanford Stadium. It's, it's tough to keep alums happy sometimes and this is the first victory they've had in their last six outings so they were victory hungry and victory starved. The unfortunate things about all the fans here at the game, what I picked up from them is they thought that somehow Baylor was going to be a walk. It's not going to be any big problem. Baylor's got a good football team, a good football program going on. Although Baylor's not a household word in the southeast like a Texas was, this Baylor team destroyed Texas in the last game of the year last year. So they can play with anybody. So Georgia beats Baylor 17 to 14 at Sanford Stadium in Athens. Georgia now goes to play at Clemson on September 21st. And Baylor, well, it just doesn't get easy. Baylor is going to play seven bowl teams, and it's off to Los Angeles, 
and Southern Cal. Tonight on Super Football Saturday, our primetime action with Pitt Panthers at Columbus, Ohio against Ohio State with Lindsey Nelson and Paul Horning. Game time at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. And next week, yours truly and Tim Foley will be traveling to Tallahassee, Florida as the surprising Memphis State Tigers, who are 1-0-1, will take on the 2-0 undefeated Florida State Seminoles at Tallahassee. We look for a very good ball game there. Bobby Bowden Seminoles are exciting, to say the least. That's at noon Eastern Time next week. Today's game has been brought to you by Michelob Light. Super premium taste in a less filling beer. Who says you can't have it all? And by AC Delco, the smart parts. And by the United States Armed Forces, a great place to start. By Delta Airlines, over 38,000 professionals serving more than 100 cities in the U.S. and overseas. Delta gets you there. And by CNN, the world's most important network. Director of Sports for TBS is Rex Lardner, executive producer Don Ellis. Our producer, Skip Ellison, director, Ken Fouts. Associate producer, Rodney Triplett. Our associate director, Richard Croker. Next on most of these stations, the football action report as Super Football Saturday continues. Athens, Georgia, where we have Vince Dooley after today's 17-14 win over Baylor. Coach Vince Dooley with a victory 17-14 over Baylor today. Coach Dooley, uh, how does it feel to get this victory here at uh, Sanford Stadium after losing a couple, which is very unusual for yeah. you and your Bulldogs? Well, it's been a while, and uh, you almost forget how it is and uh, how sweet it is, and it is indeed sweet. Uh, I thought we'd beat a very uh, fine football team and a classic football team that never would let us put, a, put them away. We had opportunities throughout the game, I thought, to put them away, but uh, we couldn't do it. And to Baylor's credit, they kept coming back, and then uh, if they hadn't gotten the ball at the end, I'm afraid that it might have been a long afternoon, but uh, I was proud of our last drive in which we kept the ball in order to run out the clock to win the game. You know, you had question marks about your secondary. How do you, without looking at film, uh, evaluate your secondary's performance today? Well, I thought they played very well because all three of them back there have really never played any. This is uh, their second ball game that they've played, and we lost Tony Flack, who was sort of the quarterback in the secondary. And uh, so we were very young, and I thought, considering the pressure that they were under, I thought they performed very, very well. Of course, they had some help uh, from the rush, which always makes the secondary play a lot better. Coach, uh, you had talked about using James Jackson, working him in there. You didn't use him at all today. Is there a reason? Well, we, uh, we said before the game that that was the plan and that uh, uh, we'd have to play it by ear or play it by a seat of a pants as to when to do it. And it just never was quite right to put him in. Wayne Johnson was doing a credible job, making some mistakes. But still, I felt like that it was best to go with a guy that, uh, in Johnson and not make a change in this particular situation, even though we planned to do it. One more question for you, and that's about your running back core. You played a lot of people back there. Any particular pleasant uh, feeling about any of your running back performances today? Well, I thought each in their own way did some good things, Tron Jackson. Uh, uh, you saw his speed getting outside, returning the kickoff. Uh, Keith Henderson, you can see the, the talent in Tim Worley, Lars Tate, McCluskey, the tough runner. I think that that's going to be the plan from now on. We've got about five people back then. We're going to use them all. Coach Vince Dooley, thank you. Thanks. He's like a, a great jockey. He doesn't care how much he wins by. He'd rather have it real close and at the end have his team just out there at the wire. Vince Dooley is perhaps as patient a coach uh, through the years. He's displayed so much patience at Georgia, and you hit it right on the head. He has that good offensive line, and he blocks well and runs and keeps the ball on the ground, and he's a consistent winner, 71% of all his games. Got a tough schedule coming up. He's got Clemson, South Carolina, then the rest of the SEC. Yeah, that South Carolina game will be tough. <laughs> we'll be back with more after this word on Turner Network Television.